Hello, Season 2, Episode 2. We have our full complement of players, our party of heroes, having returned after some absence due to time dilation shenanigans in an alternate plane, have returned to find a large amount of time has passed, and they are now heading back to what used to be the village of New Zealand, their home, which is now a burgeoning town. So I'm going to ask, can one of you guys give us a little summary of what happened at the last session? Up to you who wants to jump in. Yeah, I don't mind doing it. I'll say, don't rush at once. Yeah, I'll do it if you want. Um, yeah, so after coming through uh, the gate and seeing the, the statue that was to sort of in memory of our, our departure, um, did we work out the actual, how many years it was? I know the... I don't think we have the specifics at all. Not yet. Yeah. Okay. You've not got but, the specifics. You know it's been at least 10 years, you expect, yeah. but you don't know yeah. exactly. Okay. But yeah, quite soon after traveling through, um, we we come across a man, looked like some sort of hunter or trapper or... Um, something running through the, the forest, um, chased by wolves. So we came to his aid, fended off a number of wolves, um, found out that he was actually catching the, the sort of pups or the, the small wolves, uh, and taking them back to uh, New Zealand to, for money, basically. He was selling them. Um, but um, I don't think... Uh, don't think we we're too keen on that. So we ended up Malcolm sort of leading the the party, decided to return the the wolf pup, made a deal with a guy. Um we returned the wolf pup to after some travel to where we thought the wolves were located and where they were sort of hanging out or staying. Um at some sort of den or something. So we returned that and then Spent uh, quite a few days, about four or five days, I believe, traveling back to New Zealand. Um, encountered a few travelers en route, um, a couple of fishermen. Um, what else? There was a couple of fishermen. I think we encountered one other traveler. Yeah, you also um, you also stopped off at the, the small sort of like family farm. That's you, it. you sort of spent, you sort of refreshed yourself, spent a bit of time there talking to the the owner of the farm, you know, get a bit of a general lay of the land and a bit of sort of trying to sort of feel out, you know, what's changed, you know, what can we expect when we get to New Zealand. Then you had a bit of a discussion before you resumed your journey, you know, like what sort of thing can we expect, you know. There, there was the obvious like, oh, well, we've missed that deadline for our deal with um, Peggy Green Teeth. The yeah, the old hag, yep. Yeah. And stuff like that, and then we ended up with you guys of reaching the 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 get the east gate of New Zealand. There was a there's a few people sort of going in and out, a couple of guards, but they weren't stopping anyone. The gates were open, and there was a there was a priest at the gate with like a sort of censer that was like sprinkling like some sort of holy water on people. And when Brock walked through, he was like, "My garlic censers are tingling." Yeah, and yeah, I like, remember him having a shower. Yeah, that was a distinct term. <laughs> whiff of garlic about the water so that brock was like give it the old aftershave slap and um, that seemed you you gathered to be like a normal thing like no one was complaining about this guy like scattering this water as everyone walked in and he was like oh blessings of the old gods on you and then you guys walked through the gate and we ended with you seeing this large seven foot tallish statue of a hooded figure in the distance sort of down the down the sort of mud street of New Zealand, of a robed figure holding a set of scales in one hand, and you could see on the side of the plinth that it stood on was the legend carved in there, Judge not, lest ye be judged. And that is where we left off with you guys sort of walking into New Zealand. So we're going to pick up exactly where we left off. As you walk into the the town, I mean, it's not a, a humongous city by any stretch of the means, but it's a, 
a reasonably sized small town uh, obviously we've got the map up for you guys to have a look at and it's a fairly abstract map i've just blocked in some of the rough areas i'm not going to expect you guys to be like tracking your like movement per round or whatever as you're moving through the streets but just give you a general idea of what sort of stuff's there because this is all information you'd be able to like get from anyone who was walking through the streets like oh where's where's the tavern oh it's over there or where's well, where would i go to go to a blacksmith oh down that street there so rather than Rather than having that, I've just sort of set up the rough areas on the map so you guys can just sort of say, oh, well, we're going to go to a tavern, we're going to go to this, we're going to do whatever. Just for, for ease and speed, basically. I was I was just going to ask, John, on the way from um, the portal to the <clears throat> back to the town, yep. did we see the um, the messenger sort of set up? Weren't there um, a group of guys that were setting up in a messaging business? Go around. You've not seen any sign of them yet, no. Because they were at east of the town, weren't they? Is yes. that right? Yeah. So we didn't go past or you, you see might, any signs. You of... might expect, given that the town's expanded, that perhaps they're sort of now like in the town because the town's yep. sort of expanded to where they were. Okay. Yeah. But um, you've not seen any specific signs of like a separate sort of building that you would associate with those at Mess. Because it was. Because the other one was there was one just to the north, weren't there? That's great. The uh, the sort of um, sort of traders, weren't they? Yeah, of the, some the trading description. The dirt, yeah, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah, we can find out, I suppose. Yeah, that was the um, the trading post that uh, Hercules Buchanan had set up. But uh, again, you've not seen any specific sign of that. But that was a bit further, not like a good a good few miles to the north, which obviously you've approached from the south, so you perhaps wouldn't yep. have seen that anyway. Okay, so we pick up with you guys stood just inside the gate. You're looking down this dirt street. I mean, it's a, it's a lot bigger than it used to be, but it's still a small town, so it's not like stone-paved streets or anything like that. It's still mostly wooden buildings, a few little stone buildings. The the streets are sort of compacted dirt, although obviously it's well-traveled because it's like compacted it down. As you're walking through, Quentin, you're sort of like at the back of the, the group, I imagine, you know, sort of like staying in the shadows lurking around like wondering what chaos you can cause in new new zealand and as everyone's sort of looking at this statue like say you're a bit at the back of the group you hear from behind you back towards the gate what sounds like raised voices and like the sounds of like a general sort of commotion breaking out i will i will stop and turn around to have a quick sneaky look at that okay so, and obviously the, the rest of you will hear this as well as it continues, so feel free to act as you see fit. As you spin round, Quentin being the first to hear this, you look back and through the people of a sort of, like, there's a few other people turning around like behind you or a bit nearer to the commotion, you can see the gateway, the priest's still there, you know, the one out the sensor room was sprinkling the water, although you can see he's now sort of like pressed up against the wall of the gate, so like a look of surprise on his face. You can see there's three guards, and they're like bringing up crossbows, and they all appear to be pointing them at a, a man. He's stood in the center of the path like he was just about to walk through the gates. He's wearing like your standard sort of like traveling cloak, um, leather and furs underneath. Everything you'd expect to see a normal traveler wearing. However, he appears to be undergoing some sort of strange convulsions. And um, as you watch, and it takes no more than a few seconds, you notice what appear to be like spikes or spines of some kind burst through the fabric on the top of his hood like they're emerging out of his head. As you watch, he's sort of like thrashing around, like having these convulsions, and you see a part of his face as, he, as his hood falls off a little bit, and you can see his face appears to be running and shimmering, almost like melting candle wax held too near to a heat source, and you can see like scales, like dark scales, almost like lizard-like underneath. And as you watch, you see that a, a sort of for all intents purposes, like a lizard like tail like bursts out of the back of his clothing and is now like swishing in the dirt where he stood you see the the three guards are obviously like bringing up their crossbows they've just been sort of stood there idly they're bringing up their crossbows pointing at them and you hear one of the guards be like it's a changeling 
and obviously this happens in a few seconds. You're under no doubt they're getting ready to just like unload their crossbow bolts into whoever this guy is. But given your sort of quickness of reactions and the fact that you're always on the lookout for sort of dodgy goings on, you've got like a few seconds to like react before this happens, if you so wish. I've no idea what a change ring is, and I know these people don't want it there, so I'm going to let them have their business. Yeah, no problems. They, all three of them, well, the first two like fire their crossbows into this figure, who as he's as he's sort of writhing about, his convulsions now seem to have finished. He sort of like tears off his his clothes in a sort of like Luther Ringo Incredible Hulk style, sort of part bursting through them part sort of pulling them off and as he does so you see like his hands appear to have like metamorphosized into these lizard like claws that just like shred his clothes as he goes like that and you see this lizard like humanoid covered in these dark cracked scales with an almost like draconic sort of look to its face and spikes running down its spine it staggers back as like two crossbow bolts hit it in the chest one of them sort of like glances off slightly due to these scales. One hits deeply in the chest. It sort of staggers back, looks like it's going to fall over, manages to recover itself. Another couple of guards come like running down the street from sort of behind you guys. And they're like, they're, they're both holding crossbows. They're like, get out of the way, get out of the way. And assuming you guys, obviously if you, the rest of you guys want to do anything, just shout up. Assuming you like get out of the way like most people are doing, these two guards run past you, and like another three crossbow bolts are offloaded into this lizard-like humanoid. The third of these crossbow bolts like hits it in one of its eyes, and finally it sort of collapses onto one knee at first, and it's still sort of like struggling to stand, even though it's riddled with crossbow bolts. By this time, the first three guards have like reloaded their crossbows. Another three bolts like thud into this thing, and finally, it falls to the ground with a dull thump. Must be home. At which point, you see the the guards have sort of headed over to this creature, this changeling, as they referred to it, and they're sort of like, you know they're covering it with crossbows and they're like poking it with their boots you know at one point it sort of moves a little bit now obviously being the sort of practiced uh, fellow you are like you know a bit about shanking someone in the dark and what happens when people pass you see it's sort of spasm but you know like from your practice skills that it's 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 dead it's just like a sort of muscular like spasm but like, when it does this like twitch you see him also like jump back and again they like point the crossbows at it one of the guards even like looses another bolt into the body of this like dead creature and it just thuds into it but after a while they sort of regain their courage and they go back to like they roll it over and you can now see this it's like lying on its back now this sort of like draconic slash like lizard man creature just sort of like lying there in the dirt at which point the guards start sort of a couple of them stand by the body. The rest of them start, you know, like moving people around it and sort of like getting them through the gate, but like making sure people are keeping a wide, but almost forming like a little cordon around it. I will try and get a closer look at it because it's a dragon man. Yeah, n not a problem. You you wander closer. They're not stopping you unless you try and like get past the guards, but you don't need to get past the cordon of guards to see it. They're just basically trying to like stop anyone from like getting too close to it. But you, you know, they sort of stood there like sort of with their hands up, like telling people to move on. They're, they're not, they're not stereotypical enough to say like nothing to see here because there obviously is. But um, you know, they're just sort of telling people to like move on. And it's all being taken care of. You peer around these guards who have got far more, far more people to worry about than just some like guy like who they don't know like peering around them. And you can see this, this creature. It looks sort of humanoid. It appears to be covered in what at first you thought was sort of like black, like lizard-like scales, but they're actually like a really deep sort of crimson red colour, like so deep it's and dark it's almost black, but you can just see tinges of red. It has the sort of draconic snout, albeit much shorter than you would see on like an actual dragon or like a wyvern or something like that. 
but its proportions seem to be largely sort of just slightly larger than your average human it's it's very muscular most of its body is covered in scales like i said it has this long tail coming out from behind it its hands look like normal human hands say they have like large claws almost like talons on the end of its fingers and it has these like spikes that sort of run in a row down its spine and down the tail and obviously it's lying there at the minute with like all these crossbow bolts sticking out of it its eyes have rolled back into its head getting much trouble with these things around here one of the guards um, sort of looks down and he says uh he says, yeah, yeah, a fair bit. Uh, although uh, m most of them don't get past the uh, gate and he like, he gestures at like the preacher who's sort of like recovered himself a little bit and uh, he's resumed his like scattering this water on people. And he's like, uh, he's like, yeah, mix of holy water, garlic, iron and silver doesn't. He says that that's why they've, they've started getting a bit tricksy recently. Though. That's why they've, that's why they're wearing those thick robes, no doubt trying to shield themselves from it. Very interesting. He says, yeah, they're, they're tricky buggers, all right. They can they can look like one of us for a short period of time, but uh, get a bit of that splattered on them, and, well, most of them have a bit of difficulty maintaining it, well, as, as you've probably just seen. That was a worthwhile demonstration. He says, well, hopefully we won't have too many more of them uh, with us uh, stepping up guard patrols and vigilance at the minute. But, uh, you know, can't be too, well, like the uh, like the mayor says, can't be too careful. Can't be too careful. Very wise. At which, at which point, like, someone else starts asking him a question and he like, turns to them to like, talk. Yeah, I'll just wander off, mate. Yeah, no problem. So I'm going to move your party token into the actual turn. there we go okay so obviously the rest of you guys have seen this going on it appears to have been resolved by the guards at the gate it looks as though like whilst it's not an everyday occurrence this is certainly something they've dealt with before because they're obviously ready for it there were guards nearby that they could call on quickly for reinforcements and anyone who's nearby to them and it's up to you whether you hear this or not you can overhear the guards basically arranging for a cart to be bought to take the body away but most of the guards just occupied like moving people along and sort of keeping them out from underfoot basically do we overhear any anything about how they're dealing with the body do they burn it or cut it up or any sort of ritual or sort of a uh, routine probably more from a d6 just for dealing with it in case we ever come across such uh, a four you don't hear any specifics about how they did obviously you've heard about the the mixture of stuff that's in the sensor you know that apparently makes it more difficult for them to maintain the illusion of a human form but you don't hear any specifics about how they're going to deal with the body however you do hear one of the guards as this like this guy pulling like a little cart sort of like rumbles up you hear him like as they're loading the body on say uh, oh take it to one of the, take it to one of the towers get the apothecary to have a look at it I'm sure I want it for his uh, co collection and he sort of like jerks his thumb and you see the guy sort of like nodding as they're loading this body on and he's obviously there like getting ready to like pull this little cart away hmm and he's sort of gesturing to them big sort of east and west towers. That's correct. Yeah. Either side the river, like. Mm. Okay. And mm. a after a short time when they've loaded up the cart, you do indeed see that the cart sort of starts heading off in this sort of direction. So following the wall around the edge towards the east tower. They're pretty substantial, the walls they've got now. They like stone. They're, they're not, although from the outside, they look like they're stone walls. Uh, I don't know if you remember this from last time, but they're actually yeah. just like thick wooden walls. 
but they've used like bits of like presumably scavenged or like quarried stone to like reinforce them at certain points so it's not like an just entire stone up. wall yeah. they've just sort of like reinforced like points that might potentially need it but they're quite high yeah they're, they're pretty high yeah yeah okay but um you can see that the the actual main east gate is mostly stone and obviously the the two towers appear to be stone as well you can see that in from this distance mm. well where to then chaps where should be our first point of call uh, John, do we know if Mercy Dix is the mayor now? You've not specifically heard her referred to as the mayor. You've heard her referred to as the Lady of the Towers. And obviously okay. by, by her actual name, Mercy Dixon. You've not specifically heard her referred to as the mayor. Okay. It's either the Apocryphy or the mayor. Yep, I suppose we could... Well, do we know where Dixon might be? Presumably in the towers, right? Well, one of the towers, I would imagine. Yeah. And was the apothecary in the towers as well? Also towards the tower. Oh. I suppose we'll find <sighs> one or, or the other. Could follow the cart. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not a problem. It's not moving particularly fast. Like I say, it's just a single cart pulled by this guy who looks like just a, a normal sort of townsperson you know, pulling in a little wooden cart there's nothing that obviously leaps out about him in particular you see he you basically follow the cart it's not difficult like i say it's moving at probably slower than a normal person's walking pace but isn't he struggling with it or no he seems, he seems to have it in hand but obviously it has got this large sort of like draconic figure in it so he's not moving rapid but he's making steady work of it and you guys follow him out around the outside to... Go on, Brock, help him out. I was helping him if he's struggling, but if he seems to be doing he's all He's right. an old geezer, Brock. Was he an old geezer, was he? He's, 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 get, he's getting on a bit. He looks like he's had a bit of a hard life. Oh, all right. He's no, he's no spring chicken. I'll offer to uh, give him a hand as we're heading in this direction. He's, he's like, oh, uh, oh, thanks very much. If you just, if you just take one of, these, uh, one of these spars, obviously he's like holding like both of them. Like the wooden yeah. sort of spars. Just take one of these. Uh, strange that I'm much appreciated. And, yeah. obviously, and obviously, with your like mighty thews, the the cart moves a, a great deal quicker. And you make your way round to the east tower. At which point, you see there's a number of guards around the tower. At some point, you're not sure when this guy has like basically thrown like a sort of hessian like blanket that must have been in the cart over the corpse, you know, presumably so that people aren't gawping at it as he moves through the street. As he turns up at the guardhouse, the East Tower, you see there's like a few guards stood around, they're all wearing these sort of like purple and black like tabards. He, one of them looks over and he's like, oh, all right, Bron, what you got there for us? And he's like, it's another one of them. You know, at which point the the guards like, "All oh, right, okay, um, yeah, be best you bring it inside." Old uh, old Crawford will want it, and um, he, he sort of like he says, "Oh, I, I, I take it round the side, shall I?" As normal, he's like, "He's like, yeah, yeah, no, no problems, Brian." He's like, at which point he sort of stops and he sort of sees you, sort of like, this guy's like bent down and you're sort of towering over him behind him, helping him with the card, and he's like, the guards like. All right, Bron, have you picked yourself up a new, uh, a new apprentice, have you? And he's like, he's like, oh no, no, it's, it's, it's nothing like that. Just a, just a kind uh, stranger offered to help me with the cart. Like, I'm not getting any younger, you know. <laughs> Which one? The, the guard and him have a bit of a banter and a bit of a laugh, and the guard's like, yeah, yeah, just just take it around the side, Bron. It's it's fine. You, you know the way. At Which point he uh, he looks up at you, this uh, this Bron, this like rubbish collector or cartman for intents and purposes and he's like oh well uh, thanks thanks very much stranger I, I can take it the rest of the way from here but uh m much appreciated for your help and he he digs around in his pocket takes out like a silver coin and he like, holds it out to you no i don't refuse that no no it's your awesome. money's not required 
Thank you. He's like, oh, wow. Well, he looks a bit like, surprised by that. Like, he's like, well, oh, uh, okay. Uh. I'll take it. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm going to just check at this point. Like, have the rest of you guys been sort of, like, actively accompanying them? Or have you been like lurking in the background and as he holds out the money, Quentin just like, looms out the shadows and is like, I'll take your money. <laughs> Let's go for the shadows. <laughs> okay. So you like loom out of the shadows and what do you say? Do you just say, like, I'll take it? Yeah, I'll take it. At which point he's like, oh! oh. And, he, and he sort of like, he looks a bit confused and then he sort of like looks at you, Brock, with that sort of questioning look as they're like, what's going on? I'll just, I'll just, I'll just chuckle. Yeah. Okay, Quentin. <laughs> at which point, sort of seeing that you've addressed him by name and you obviously know him, he's like, oh yeah, they must be together. And he's like, oh no, he's only, um, he sort of recovers himself quickly and he's like, oh yeah, yeah, no, no problems. And then he passes you a silver coin. And then he's like, oh well, again, thanks for your help, stranger. And he starts like pulling this little cart round the, the sort of side of the tower and sort of like peering round to where he's going. You can see there's like, I hesitate to call it a yard. It's just like an area of sort of like flat dirt with like a really sort of small sort of wooden wall sort of around part of it. Or it, it looks more like, you know, if you've seen like the sort of little fences around like chicken coops and like stuff like that, it looks almost like that. But he takes it round into this little yard in inverted commas and you can see there's like a, a much smaller like side door with a couple of little steps running up to it in the side of the tower as he's uh, as he's heading around there he stops the car to the bottom of the stairs walks up it's like two or three steps walks up it knocks on the door door opens a, a guard stood there they have a little bit of a chat between them. you can't really hear what they're saying unless you get closer but you can see he's like pointing at the cart and obviously explaining what's going on the the guard walks out heads over to the car you can see he's like he's bundling up the the body in this like hessian sack and he's he's basically getting himself ready and like testing the weight of the load ready to like obviously like lift this body up and presumably take it inside the tower you know the coin john what yeah. what's on it it's a silver coin that appears to have a stylized like sunburst on one side of it. Does it at all resemble um, original Rohaline money? It, it looks a little bit cruder than, than Rohaline money. Like, you know, whoever made it's not sort of had quite the technology they've had in like Rohaline. It's been like hand hammered, basically. But uh, one thing that does strike you is a little bit odd is when you turn the coin over from the crown side, you see it on the other side is a very, very crude, obviously like die cast stamped depiction of what looks to be like a seal on the other side. And you can see there's like a, a sort of dull, like reddy brown smear on the side, which you have a sniff. And it's definitely like an old sort of like blood stain as though someone had like cut their thumb or injured their finger and then they've been sort of holding the coin and they've left like a little smidge of like blood which has long since dried on the uh, the tail side or the seal side of the coin that's all you notice about it all blood money at which point the uh, Bron, this uh, this cart man, this collector, with his job done, he picks up his now empty cart and he starts like making his way back into the town, away from the tower, leaving you guys stood around the tower. You can see the guy who's picked up the body has taken it inside. He shuts the side door. You hear the sound of like bolts being drawn on this side door, and you're now left standing near the tower there's two of these purple and black clad guards stood on the the front door the larger entrance to the tower you can see one of them's holding a spear one of them is holding a crossbow the one holding a spear has a, a some sort of black powder pistol hanging at his belt weimar is someone who uses his weapons quite frequently you can also see that sort of on the other side, he has like at least three pouches of what you assume to be like black powder, so within easy reach, so he could just like grab it, load it, etc. Oh, why more? Now she's time to shine. Well, it, it certainly looks like we um, 
we can upgrade our armory here. <laughs> or rather, they have done it for us already. Go on then, White Mark, knock on the door. Yeah, you was uh, mm. last to speak to Mercy Dixon, weren't you? Yeah. Most likely to get through to her. So we have no idea how this is going to go. I say, as I say, you know, give the knock. Okay, well, obviously there's two guys sort of stood outside, or you got up to the side door. Yeah, uh, yeah. Okay, yep, you, you walk up to the side door, you knock on the door, a guy again in one of these like purple and black sort of halved tabards sort of opens the door and he looks a bit surprised to see like perhaps he was expecting it to be Bron, you know, like he'd forgotten mm -hmm. something or whatever. And he sort of opens the door and he's like, Look, oh uh and he blow he recovers himself. <laughs> he's like, uh is it sort of looks you up and down as the sort mm -hmm. of like armoured peg leg <laughs> man yeah, you are. Nice. <laughs> and he and he looks like a little bit bewildered and he's like, um can I help you, sir? Can you take a message to the Lady of the Towers? He says, well, well, I could if she was here. Not in Ro uh, not in New Zealand, then? He says, no, no. He says, uh, he says she spends most of her time in a Worms Watch Tower to the west. Does Worms Watch tell us anything? Is it? It's it's not a name you're familiar with. Yeah, yeah, because I was like, we we know the staff stone tower. Yeah. Um, so I, what I'll what I'll say is like, that's not the staff stone tower, is it? He says, oh no, he says, uh, he says, well, uh, after all, after all the business with the uh, the, the, the the dragon spine, uh, Lady Dixon, she. Uh, she was quite clear that she wanted an early warning system in case any anything came roiling up out of the dragon spine that would threaten New Zealand. So she had another tower built over there, and well, she spends most of it. Given what happened to her, she spends most of the time there. You know, there's a beacon on top of it. We keep a watch from the top of uh, the west and east towers. So it's like an early warning system in case there's any danger from the dragon spine that might pose a threat to New Zealand. I mean, so that's that's why she elected a. That's why she elected uh, Mayor Kersey. You know, I so he, he, can, he can oversee everything while she spends most of her time there. So if I, you know, take a few steps to the side, can I see where he's telling me that this tower is? Because it's supposed to link up with these ones, right? Okay, let me just have a look. I've got to check the distances. I think at the moment, since you're at sort of ground level... Probably mm -hmm. no, because obviously you wouldn't be able to really see over like the sort of town walls. So, are there mountains in the distance? There is what looks to be a large dark mountain range in the distance. Uh, you'd estimate very roughly, maybe. Oh, you don't know how many days. I mean, maybe four, five, six days travel. You can see that so, it, it, you see there's this sort of small sort of patch of a cluster of mountains, and uh, but one of the mountains at the centre one appears to be like huge towering above all the others, and it's that one that you can really see. So I'll gesture at those and I'll say, "Over yonder, then." That's right, about halfway between uh, here and the dragon spine. Like I say, it's an early warning system. If anything. Anything big and nasty comes out of the comes out of the mountains, or the beacon on Worms Watch gets lit, and it notifies us here to like prepare ourselves and like fortify the town as much as we can. Right then. The now, what happened to the lady? He, he, he sort of looks a little bit uncomfortable, and then he says, um, "Wow, during the." Uh, during the nights of uh, Colorless Fire, when the uh, when the mountains rose up and uh, when the the Fire Lord first appeared, well, I, I, don't, I don't know the truth of it. I, I wasn't there myself, but from what I hear, the Fire Lord used to be someone 
the, the lady knew. And I haven't asked her about it because, like, asking her about it's a quick way to get yourself a demotion and find yourself on the train duty. But from what I hear, it, you, someone she used to know became the Fire Lord. This huge fucking beast that lives in the Dragon Spire. And she tried to, uh, she tried to, like, stop it. And wow, she, uh, she got a taste of the uh, the Lord's fire for her, for her troubles. Left her with a horrible scar in it as. And well, people say, not me mind you, but people say that since that day she's been a little bit paranoid about the, uh, about the dragon spine. You know, building the new tower, spending most of her time keeping a watch out for it. Some people say, not me mind, but some people say, you know, she's like borderline obsessed. You know, she, they, they think she's a... She wants to get revenge for for this betrayal. But way I see it, she set up an early warning system. She's just focused on keeping New Zealand safe. And well, surely that's what we all want at the end of the day, isn't it? Yes, so. But yeah, uh, I mean, they used to say, they used to say like back in the day, she used to be like fairly care, I mean, before all this, she used to be like fairly carefree and sort of a pleasant person to be around. But they, well, the rumours are that after after her injury, like something something seemed to go a little bit cold inside her, and she's never been exactly the same since. And how many years have passed since? He says, "Oh, let's see. It's been about it's been about ten years since the uh, since the nice colourless fire." Okay. Uh, and what? Okay, sorry. Oh. Well, uh, what <laughs> what can you tell us about the mayor, Mayor Kersey, did you say? He says, oh yeah, Mayor Kersey, he said, don't get me wrong, I don't want to speak ill of him, he's a, he's a fine fellow, but he's he's one of these, like, he's, he's from merchant stock. Originally, he was, he was one of the traders who came over from Raveline to, to Valcona. And he's me, his, his knowledge base, it's mainly about trade, coin, stuff like that. And he's mainly concerned with that, you know. Obviously, he want Well, we've seen New Zealand expand with the trade coming down the river and the like. And he wants to keep that going. He's, I think they say he's got visions of transforming New Zealand into like the epicentre of trade for Falcone and wants it to turn into a, a huge coastal city. And, well, he might do it. I don't know. But um, that's what he's mainly concerned with, trade. So... The, uh, the the lady of the towers when it comes to like military stuff well it tends to either be her or uh, captain donald like captain of the guard who like deal with the military stuff but when it comes to like the trade and the politicking and stuff like that that tends to be more the mayor M most of the time it seems to work all right but you know occasionally there have been words when the two don't quite mesh together as much you know like what like uh, when they first brought in the measures at the uh, at the gates to stop uh, unsavoury types uh, sneaking in, well, he wasn't too keen on that because he thought it might put some people off trading here and might cause cause eruptions. And there were words between him and uh, the lady of the towers because obviously she's mainly concerned with the defence. But they they worked it out eventually, and you know now it's just another part of life. You know, I mean, does does it really hurt you that much if you get sprinkled with a little bit of water when you come in? Okay, thank you very much. No, you're welcome. I guess we'll step away. <clears throat> yeah. Um, where to next? Should we go and see the lady? Well, first, we're going to do that. We need to resupply. Eat, yeah. sleep, clean. Brock smells like an armpit. Not now. I've got my new fragrance. He's, he's got two of those. So. Yeah, I suppose resupply, and then I think we do need to start at the lady uh, before we do anything else. So. That's okay, it. so should we find a tavern? and? Yeah. Okay, so obviously the guard's still stood nearby over here as you're talking, and he's like, well, if you're looking for a... If you're looking for a a tavern there's only really a there's only really the one in new zealand he's like oh uh, 
he's like, oh, the hunter and beetle, that's what you need. He's like, he's like, look, just follow this street down there by the uh, by the river, just before the bridge on your right. Can't miss it. They name it after that hunter that got in trouble with a beetle. He says, yeah, what, what, it's a, uh, it's it's one of the local legends, you know. It tells of a a proud hunter who was delving into a an ancient uh, keep of some sort. I forget the details. And uh, well, the whole place was infested by these giant man-eating beetles. And well, they say he like he like sacrificed himself bravely, allowing his uh, companions to escape. And well, when they set the tavern up, um, they, they named it after the uh, the story. Although it sounds a bit far fetched, if you ask me. Yeah, there's always tall tales when you're exploring, right? Yeah, of course there is. But he says, yeah, they'll, uh, they'll, they'll see you right at the old uh, Hunter and Beetle. Okay, we should go then. Okay. And following his directions, you head down the street... So just before the bridge, where there is indeed a tavern. As you arrive outside it, you can see that there, rather than having an actual sort of sign hanging up, as would be tradition, there actually appears to be like a large sort of like beetle carapace sort of hanging up outside, you're like creaking in the wind as a normal tavern sign would. It's a fairly sort of small place i mean looking looking at it it looks like it might once have been like a warehouse like by the side of the river like a sort of storage warehouse that's been sort of converted you can see there's only like little small windows but the doors open you can see a number of tables inside there's a few people sort of sat there like chatting and drinking mugs of ale and mead and such like I think we need to find the sage before we go, even if he's still alive, and then you can probably settle up your bill. <laughs> Sod that. <laughs> <laughs> be good to know if he's still around, though. Well, it'd be one face we know, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay, what do you guys want to do? Are you heading into the tavern? I'd go into the tavern and yeah, we need some ale, some food, some bedding, some baths. Yeah, not a problem. All the sort of standard stuff you can buy in a tavern is available there. That's not a problem. Uh, you you sit down. There's various sort of hubbub of conversation going on. A couple of like tankards of like fairly standard sort of grain beer are like bought over to you and set down. The food on offer is fairly plain, you know, like stews and stuff like that. It's, it's not bread, so... Yeah. It's not bread, it's not crackers, so... That's it, yeah. It's, it's not hard tack or like iron rations. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's not a problem. You can see from sort of looking around that there's a few sort of rooms that people can, like, book effectively or pay for to, like, stay in. But uh, it appears that a fairly small town tavern, as you might expect, like say wooden building. Uh, there's a, a small bar set up. There's a few barrels on the bar, etc. There's people moving around with sort of wooden platters, uh, passing out these ales. Like people are coming in and out, like throwing coins down on the counter and stuff like that. And you can just generally hear sort of people like talk. There's a bit of a lull in the conversation as you sort of like walking through the door and like. Your appearance draws like a few sort of, a few sort of strange looks from the assembled clientele. who are all sort of dressed in this sort of like slightly odd fashion that you experienced in last session, which seems to be the sort of general fashion as like waistcoat and like shirts underneath that sort of stuff. A few people with like tricorn hats on, and you guys are stomping, looking like a, a barbarian, a knight. Uh, an elven ranger and a robed thief and like the conversation sort of has a brief lull as everyone's like it's like looking over oh, these jokers coming in but it once you sort of like you settle and everyone just sort of goes back to their conversation and no more seems to be said about it
Right, Malcolm, I think you're in charge of funds and... Yeah. See stuff. Here's, here's a silver thing I got earlier. Cool. Um, so I will have approached the landlord, I guess. And then <clears throat> um, we're looking for a place to stay for me and my companions. It's like, oh, yeah, that, that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, how long are you looking at? How long are you looking for? Uh, just for tonight. We're on our way in the morning. He sort of looks over around the Navy and he's like, yeah, uh, five gold crowns and it's fine. And baths. He says, um, he says, wow, we haven't really got any uh, any bathing facilities uh, on site, I'm afraid. I'll jump in the river, it is. <laughs> um, so I'll hand them the five... Uh, Gold crowns, and um, we are we're looking to resupply. Is there? He takes the five gold crowns off you, and he's like, he's like, oh bloody hell, I've not seen any of these for a while. He's like, so like, this is old Rowaline money, isn't it? Is it? I'm assuming so, because like it's your old gold. And he's yeah, like, sorry, I was most, more um, yeah, yeah. You say to me, like, is it? And he's like, he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, don't worry about it, it's still good. Gold's gold after all. And he's like, oh, I've just not seen any of these in a while. And he like gives it the old in his teeth, and he's like, oh, fine, as you like, uh, straight. He's like, now, uh, and he looks over at Quentin, he's like, as for your query about the bathing facility, he's like, I said, we don't have any bathing facilities on, on hand as such, but he's like, I've got an old like tin bath in the back, I can, I can have one of the lads like bring some water to like fill it for you but uh, we ain't got like no like fancy like heated baths no nothing like that i just want to wash he's like all right and he, he turns around and he's like uh, snaps his fingers and one of the serving lads looks up and he's like um he's like oh i've the um he sort of gestures at one of the rooms at the end he's like i've um I i've my tin bath dragged through there and uh see they've got jugs of water to fill it and the the lad sort of like nods and he he runs off and starts seeing to that Um, anything else I can do you for sir uh, I guess we need directions to a uh, we need travelling supplies he says oh well you're in luck there there's a lot of traders pass through uh, New Zealand and he like, obviously gives you various directions and he's like yeah you'll find pretty much anything you need there's plenty of traders coming through here plenty of travellers stop off on their way up river, so yeah, you should be able to find whatever you want. Well, you got coin to pay for it. Ah, oh, yeah, certainly do. Um, what can you tell me about the statue of the judge? How long has that been there? He says, "Oh, let's see. Must be, must be a uh, just over five year." He says, "Yeah." He says, uh, "As you mentioned, he says uh, that was a uh, that was the last thing that the uh, the renowned stonesmith Crosnon uh, carved." Uh, before he passed. Oh. He says, yeah, he says, uh, then if you've seen, he says, there's four of them in all. Oh, is there? He says, yeah, um, now let me think, he says, yeah, there's the, there's the judge, there's the, the flayed god, there's the, the great serpent, and there's the shining one. He says, yeah, there's all, there's four of them in a row. Okay. He says, mm -hmm. "Yeah." He says, "Yeah." If you get a chance, you'll have a closer look at them. There, there's some mighty fine carving. Uh, obviously, they're they're sort of in what passes for the uh, the the temple district. You know, there's a there's a couple of churches around there to uh, to like the one true God. There's a there's the shrine of the old gods there. So yeah, you should have, should have a look. Some, some nice sculpting there. He says, uh, did, "Did a lot of the, the stonework in the in the town before he passed on." Did a uh, did Crosnon? Ah. I have heard of him. Um, someone else I've heard of who uh, lived here some years ago was uh, Quilac the Sage. He says, oh. So I've not had that name mentioned for a while. He says, yeah, yeah, we used to, he used to be hereabouts. Uh, is he still hereabouts? Did well, he move on? I don't think so. I think he. Um, I think he left the. Uh, I mean, 
I don't know for sure, but I'm from what I remember. I think he, I think they said he left the town and not where he went to. I don't really know. Mm. Mind you, again, okay. he, he, um, I mean, it's going back a ways now. He, uh, he, he worked with a, uh, with Crosnall on some of the, uh, some of the like the defenses on the walls and like the towers you can see hereabouts. The, uh, the older, uh, the old apothecary. Uh, she used to. Uh, she, she was his apprentice for a little bit. Ah. And uh, Crawford. Like, that that's right, uh, Zebulon Crawford, and uh, after. After old uh, Queen like left, well, she's sort of like taken on the mantle, I suppose. Although she's a, uh, she's mostly working for the uh, the town guard now, from what I is. Okay. Okay, maybe I'll go and have a look. Thank you very much. Oh, walk no back over and sit down. Yep, yeah, no problems. You, you sit back down. You're all sort of drinking your drinks uh, it seems to be the custom in this place that when you sit down like a load of drinks they basically bring over for want of a better term they bring over like a wooden plate with like some like bar snacks on it and it's obviously just like the off cuts of meat they've had from like better meals and sort of stuff like that they can't really sort of sell so they just sort of like give it away free and that's a little wooden one of the serving lads puts down a little wooden plate and there's like a few sort of like scrat ends of meat and some like biscuits and stuff like that on it and a, and a bit of like crusty bread that they've obviously like gone a bit stale so they're like oh we'll give that away free but you know it's it's not cost you anything it's put down people are chatting eating their food like knocking back their drink etc there you go brock you're a growing boy oh it's good to see meat on the menu again uh, as you're as you're all sort of sitting there, sort of like pondering your next move, why are you here? A couple of like fellows on like a table near you, and they, they're sort of they're one of the group of people that stopped talking when you came, but they've resumed their conversation. And as you sort of like lean back and you hear it a bit more, you hear one of these fellows be like, "Wow!" And I say, "You're full of horse shit." That's what I say. And it, his companions like, "No, I tell you." Large as life, I saw it with my own two eyes. Great bloody big thing it was. And he's like, rubbish. He's like, no one's seen a troll in these parts for, oh, I must be nigh on 15 year. And he's like, no, I told you, I told you, I was just travelling through the woodlands, doing a bit of trapping, and it came looming up out of this great hole in the ground. Bloody big thing, it stink rolling off it, it was. Well, I was on my mule at the time, and well, I didn't much fancy tangling with a beast like that. So well, I turned it round, put my put my feet to its flank, and I was off as far as quick as I could, quick as my me, me old mule could carry me. Left it in my dust behind me, but I could hear it roaring behind me. I thought it was going, I was going to feel the very breath of the beast on the back of my neck any minute. But well, I rode like I rode like the. Uh, the the, sh the smoking mirror himself were behind me, and then well when I looked round, couldn't see I nor hair of it, and that was the last I saw of it. God's so honest truth, I swear. <laughs> how close is this table from us? It, well, five foot. Yeah, so I'll I guess I'll just lean over. I was like, hey, I couldn't help but overhear uh, something about a troll. Uh, which which direction are we talking? You said a hole in the ground. Uh, at which point, you see, like the, the fellow who was like sort of saying this was all rubbish. He sort of like rolls his eyes and he's like, oh. And his friend, like, obviously eager to get like a more receptive mm -hmm. audience, like turns to look at you and he's like, he's like, yeah, that's right, stranger. He's like, oh, few days to the east of here, like on the uh, on the southern edge of the wolf forest, it was. Uh, like I say, I was just doing a bit of trapping on my old mule, gone to check on my traps and whatever. And well, I comes across these. I thought it was a cave at first of these like holes in the ground and I was just about to investigate it but you know see whether there were like any animals that I could turn a profit on and wow this huge bloody beast came looming up out the out the hole the stink was rolling off it and it was massive like blotted out the sun and wow I didn't fancy tangling with that so I put my feet into my mule turned round and I rode away as fast as I could like the the smoking mirror himself would be over me I thought I'd feel its breath on my neck any second and then wow when I finally dared to turn round 
couldn't see any sign of it, but I could. I swear I can almost smell it stink now. And his his companion under his breath. So I can smell some more bullshit. That's what I can smell. <laughs> yeah, I can smell something. Um, <laughs> so, holes, you said. Many, many holes? Just one hole. He's like, oh, I reckon there were there were three by my count. Like I said, I thought he might. Well, there's always been like rumors of like old caves in the forest and stuff like that. And sometimes mm-hmm. like, animals move into them, you know, they like make their homes in them. And I thought, well, it might be a good place to set up some traps, you know, like catch a few hair, like maybe a wolf, uh, maybe they'll bore or two. And although we don't see many of them in the wolf forest now, but uh, well, so I was just like, say, I'm a mule going back to a uh, check, see if I could lay some traps. And like I said, I was just about to get done with this bloody great big thing rose up out of the hole. And he starts going into the same like spiel yeah. again about, and yeah. this time like wait, each time he tells this story like this thing's bigger. Yeah, it gets it gets bigger every time. So I'll I'll toss him a a gold coin for his trouble and for uh, bringing this like, oh, information to the town. He's like his his friends are like he's got long obviously long suffering friends sort of looks yeah. over at you and he's like he's like oh I wouldn't be thanking him stranger he's like any excuse to tell this story and he's like is that He's like, don't don't pay him no mind. He's been having he's been having a little bit too much moonshine, you know, when he's out on his own, you know. I, I swear, when he started telling this story, it was like it was like five foot high, and he's like, now, but every time he tells it, it's like the size of a mountain. So, I'll you know listen to them yeah. banter on. His friends and are like, well, I might be exaggerating a bit, but I swear <laughs> yeah. it's true. And they, they they carry on. So they're yeah. obviously friends, but they're sort of like ribbing each of the ribbit. Yeah, and I'll I'll be as we go along. Um, I'm like lightly sketching stuff on our map, which needs a whole like overhaul. But I'll I'm making notes as we go about like I'm putting like worm tower mountain uh, is is in one corner. And there's like troll holes in the ground. Uh, and... Okay, so I'm gonna move us back onto the main map, and what I'll do is I will reveal that the rough locations of these two areas. Once the map loads. Okay. So just let me know when you're all on the map. So it can take a little while. Yeah, now anyway. Yep. Okay, let's wait for it to load on your analysis. There we go. Okay, so looking at your map, the the <laughs> this sort of like caves that he seems to be talking about are sort of here-ish. And the the Worms Watch Tower is sort of here-ish. So Worms Watch is roughly a day's travel to the west. And these caves would seem to be a couple of days to the east of the gateway that you all originally came out of. you guys because obviously it's down to you would you rather i keep us on the main map or would you like me to move us back to the uh the new sealing map uh, the new sealing map okay the tower don't look too far away though no like i say it's like a day to the west yeah it's not too bad So it's over to you guys. What do you want to do now? 
what I'm going to wash. Um, and then I'm going to wash this leather armor. Yep, not a problem with that. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a fairly tepid bath, like I it's not heated. It's basically just a, an old tin bathtub that they've sort of got some water from. Probably best not to ask where, in like big like clay jugs that they've like filled it probably about three quarters full of this water and you sort of like wash yourself as best you can you like rinse down your armor that sort of stuff that's not a problem it's not, yeah, it's, it's not, it's not exactly luxury there. but it does it does wash some of the dust and weariness of travel out of you and then we need to have a, di a discussion about what funds we've got available because we need to all resupply and then go i guess to this tower Yeah, I think that's the uh, that's the where we're going to get the most information from, that Mercy Dixon. Okay, well, in terms of in terms of resupply, and obviously I'm not going to make you go through the whole rigmarole of going around to different shops, etc. Any pretty much anything on the the standard list of adventuring gear can be purchased here. Uh, most sort of weapons and armor can be purchased here, although you notice that. Like, there doesn't appear to be much in the way of like fully like metal suits of armor, like leather armor, shields, easy to get hold of. Whereas it almost seems like sort of chain mail and plate mail have like really fallen out of fashion. So like there doesn't seem to be much of that about. In terms of weapons, you can pretty much get most stuff for for the standard costs. If there's anything a bit more esoteric or a bit more unusual obviously shout up and I'll let you know if you can get hold of that but anything you want to buy off the standard equipment list just deduct your money and you can add it to your sheet that's not a problem or if you can't add it to your sheet let me know and I'll wang it I'll make a note and I'll wang it on there so Weimar's finally got his armour and now he's out of date yep within <laughs> like two days <laughs> however sh should he ever choose to sell his armour it's now not just plate mail armor, it's now like an antique collector's piece. So mm -hmm. And you probably actually will if any of you look and it's up to you whether you were you probably do find a, a couple of like suits of plate mail, but they're more being like sold like say as like antiques rather than like armor you'd wear. It's like, oh this is a collector's piece, it's a in your dining thing. hall <laughs> yeah and you like you see people like trying to charge stuff like like trying to charge upwards of like a thousand gold pieces for like a suit of plate mail and you're like yours cost you like 500 so you're like obviously they because they're not regularly produced as a matter of course they have to be like specially commissioned and like made or they're like old antiques so it's driven the price up yeah and i guess uh, like there's, hmm. they probably don't really even know how to make it too well anymore if they're not regularly doing it. Like it's not a skill that's in demand. Yeah. So, yeah, we and, have an antique. And, and if and if any of you ask about again, it's up to you whether you do or not. You will find out that since sort of like black powder weaponry and crossbows and stuff like that became more common. You get the impression that the sort of like the ways of war, such as they are, have changed substantially to the point where it's no longer like big regiments of like knights like riding out and fighting with swords. It's more sort of like huge like blocks of like cavalry with like muskets and stuff like that, and like huge crossbow regiments and spear regiments. So like plate mail armors like really fallen out of fashion, whereas like leather and stuff that allows you a bit more maneuverability has sort of like remained in fashion obviously the leather armor works well as sort of like generally tough wear and tear gear anyway um john i presume we're okay to pick up uh mules and a cart and that yep. sort of stuff absolutely fine standard price a cart will cost you 100 gold pieces or if you prefer a wagon that'll cost you 200 no, we just got a small cart, I think. Oh, uh, cart. Okay, cart. So that's 100, and you will need either one draft horse or two mules to pull it. Uh, and we've got with two mules. Okay, the mules cost 30 gold pieces each. Perfect.
and yeah, that, that's not a problem. You, you're you easily able to pick those up. You have to travel to the, the sort of northern part of the city. It seems like most of the sort of traders are sort of congregated there. Uh, you also see that the sort of like mostly the sort of like the northern part of the city, no doubt due to the presence of all these traders and trade going on, appears to be sort of slightly more affluent than some of the other parts of the town. Do we see um do we see any ice walkers anywhere? Ice walkers. You do actually all... see, you do actually see a few people who who look like ice walkers there. Again they're they're dressed a little strangely to your eyes. Uh obviously not so much with the like massive heavy furs due to like the climate having been changed. But you do mm. see some people walking around who have like the telltale like sort of swirling like blue tattoos of ice walkers and they have the, the sort of pallid complexion and the piercing blue eyes that are that are common mm. to your people. Mm. That's, that's good to know that they're still still around. Indeed, and as you're walking around, so you're like paying you you have a particular interest in this, bro. You see that whereas back in your day to to use a phrase like when you were originally in New Zealand, you you'd sort of just started spearheaded by you and Lamb and the, the other ice walkers you you just started to sort of like try and integrate like ice walkers into like being part of like the village life and you'd started that off. Whereas now it appears that has continued and ice walkers appear to be like integrated into the mainstay of like New Zealand site like you see like ice walkers are like ice walker traders like up north there's a few like furriers you know selling animal furs and stuff like that who are definitely ice walkers as you're heading up the river you see a few people sort of working on the docks and like unloading stuff from boats who are obviously ice walkers and as you walk around you even see like a few of the uh, a few of the guard like the town guard who are obviously ice walkers with the tattoos and however, unlike most of the guards who are like wearing these like big purple and black halved tabards, the the ice walkers, they they seem to be like mainly sort of like bare chested, like a few sort of bits of fur, but they have like a sort of like almost like a, a little flag or a pennant hanging down from their like belts, which have the same black and purple coloration on, to sort of mark them out as guards rather than wearing like the full tabard like the rest of them. Yeah, I'll I'll just talk to Lan and you know just just mention it and point out that you know it seems to be going well as far as the Ice Walker integration. The others is yeah, she she nods and says, "It it to be honest, it's something of a relief after after so much time away. I I, I was greatly afraid of what had what had become our people with all the." All the changes that have obviously happened, but mm. I suppose I should have known better. After all, our our people have faced far greater trials than this in the past and have survived. Oh yes. Well, it, 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 like the the tribal elders always used to say, when when the world changes, you must bend and change with it, or you will be broken. Indeed, wise words. Let us hope, she says, um, that they have they have not forgotten all of our traditions. As you walk around, you see more of them. They've still got these same tattoos, and like say they, mm. they still seem to be retaining their cultural identity, even though they've been like integrated. Yeah. That seems to set a mind a little bit at ease. And I'm sure they still live in their sort of villages and places elsewhere. So you do actually see signs that some of them have are now sort of like living in New Zealand. But if you ask around, then again, it's up to you if you do. You'll be told that, like, yeah, there are still ice walkers who maintain the old ways of like living on the ice flows, and although most of them have moved like further north as the cold like receded, but mm. some of the ice walkers have now sort of like become more fully integrated and you know live in various towns and whatever. Yeah, I want I want to try and I don't need to go into great deal, but I want to see if we can find any sort of um, I don't know poster or anything that would give away. Like the date or the year that we're in, so we don't come across really weird asking what what year it is. Or okay, yeah, that is not a problem. So you, well, let's, how how would you go about trying to find this out without sort of like just asking? Somebody? I did. Yeah, I didn't know if 
if there was anything like a, any sort of news like pinned up on a, a board or anything that would have a date or anything um, in like the trading area or the market square or well market area anything like that that might have a upcoming festival not really like anything a, like that there's not really like a notice board as such but as you're uh, as you're wandering around you do see like a few ice walkers around and obviously they, they still speak the ice walker tongue or like a, bit, a bit of like the sort of I suppose slang words will have changed but like the the central core of like the ice walker language is still familiar to you so to them it probably sounds like you're speaking just like a bit of an old dialect of the same language like the odd word that like you're like oh is this that i'm not sure but you see you sort of like chat to a few of the ice walkers as you are walking around and it seems to you that from what they're saying i mean obviously they're giving you ice walker dates not the standard calendar but you're familiar with that and that's absolutely fine they seem to be suggesting that 10 years have passed since you were last here crazy times yeah well obviously I'll let the rest of the group know I'm sure they've already come to their conclusions and rough ideas but I don't think I don't think there was anyone else in the town that we knew, really, was there? A few there of the guards, were, maybe. But. Yeah, there are a few odd, odd people. They say it's obviously grown a great deal since you were last here. Hmm. Might spend a bit of time just seeing if I can find anyone that might have been here when we were here, because I assume the rest of the day we're going to be fairly relaxed and just gathering our resources and a bit of okay. uh, relaxation. Roll me a d6, bro. A three. Okay, unfortunately, despite looking around, you don't find anyone that like jumps out at you as a, oh, this is definitely someone we knew when we were here previously. Yeah, I mean, I weren't there for as long as the others was, so I probably That's didn't it. And, and know to, as many people. And to be honest, as well, a lot of a lot of the time you spent there, like a lot of the people were just like, "Oh, these are just like villagers who are like in the background doing their stuff." So you're not yeah. sure they will jump out at you, even if you saw one of them. That's fair enough. Okay, so while this is going on, Quentin, you finished your bath. You feeling a little, a little bit refreshed? What what are you what are you up to? What are you thinking? Thinking I need to go and get some crossbow bolts, arrows, rations. That's absolutely fine. In terms of rations, um, standard seven days rations will cost you five gold pieces. Yeah. Um, crossbow bolts. A case of thirty crossbow bolts will cost you ten gold pieces. Yeah. So I'm making out of those. So he's buying one lot of rations, yeah. Yeah, I'm buying one iron ration, one standard ration. So the iron's fifteen gold. Yeah. And some crossbow bolts. Yeah. And that's everything I need, thankfully. Okay, I'll talk those on your carriage sheet now. I've popped them on, mate. Oh, lovely, brilliant. Okay, yeah, so that's fine. You you have a bit of a wander around, as with everyone else. You, and, and then I'm going to go and look at these statues, I think. Okay, no problems. So as Quentin's going to look at these statues, is anyone else going with him? or? Yeah, I will too. Okay, <clears throat> no problems. So as you head out, you see, you, you basically follow the river, to the sort of like the northwest, so you're sort of like heading along in this direction towards the the temple district, which is this yellow section here. As it was described earlier, it appears to be a jumble of like a few churches and like a shrine, and there are these four statues of the old gods. As you approach, you can see 
there is a one of the statues the first one you see which is the one you glimpsed from the the gateway into the town is this seven foot tall slender robed figure with a hood holding a set of scales in one hand has this judge not lest ye be judged carved into the base of it at which point can you please roll me a d6 malcolm and quentin let me know what you get Uh, five six okay so you you're both just like oh yeah we can see there's like another few statues like in a row behind this we couldn't see previously and you're about to like wander around and have a look at them when as you're walking past this statue of the judge just out the corner of your eye quentin you sort of like catch sight of this very sort of like very immaculately carved sort of like stone face that's obviously been like carved fully like under the hood and you're like and you have a quick peek under it. And when you look under it, you notice that the carved stone face depicted on this statue looks an awful lot like Malcolm. Uh, Malcolm. I think you've had an admirer. <laughs> um, so I'll go and have a look at the next one and see if you can see the face of the next one. Okay, the next one is very easy to spot. It appears to be, you see it has like the great serpent sort of carved in the base. And it's a, it's a tall, muscular figure wearing this sort of like feathered sort of, a, it's got this sort of feathered like sort of, I suppose, necklace or sort of like shoulder piece around it and it's like holding up a spear and it bears a striking resemblance <laughs> to Mr. Brock Montaigne. Go on then, where's peg leg? Okay, you continue walking <laughs> down and you see another statue which is described as it has like the shining one carved into the base and this would appear to be a sort of idealised statue that very much looks like Weimar's son's peg leg he has both legs he's standing there in like full armor he's holding a sword in one hand and in the other hand there's like this stylized sort of like stone like sunburst with like the rays sort of coming out of it in his other hand and he's sort of like looking up towards the sky oh boy and finally and finally you move around to the fourth statue which carved in the base it says the flayed god and this figure is a hooded robed figure that's sort of like crouched low on the plinth on which it's carved it's holding two daggers that very sort of immaculately carved appear to be like dripping like blood or some sort of substance down in like two like rivulets that join with the base and then they sort of like flow into the robes that are sort of gathered around it and when you peep under the hood to see the face it bears a striking resemblance to you quentin that's the ugliest one yeah this is the one with the most detail <laughs> because I'm a handsome bugger and that's what you see you can see around the base of the all of these statues are various like candles or sort of like votive offerings nothing of any great worth more sort of sentimental stuff and you can see on some of the statues like people have placed like garlands of like plants and herbs and stuff like that on the statues mm. nearly godlike um So, am I the only one thinking it'll go fairly badly for us if we start saying, oh, we're, by the way, we're these people? I was wondering if anyone would notice, but obviously not yet. Now, I will point out, although these statues bear a striking resemblance to you all, they are somewhat idealized versions of yourselves. You know, so like, it will be fine. So the obvious example is like Weimar's not got a peg leg, but all the features are sort of like idealized. Like 
heroically sculpted versions of you. So, don't get me wrong, Brock as himself is like a tall, muscly man mountain, but it's been like even more exaggerated on the statue. It's more like muscle than man. Yeah, pretty much. (laughs) It's just a walking fist. And inside his beard is just another fist. But uh, (laughs) as you look at the statues, you can see that the the statue of the shining one, the one that looks like Weimar, appears to have tried to like emphasize like a sort of a virtuous look. Like his fa- the face is very serene. It's gazing upwards towards the heavens. It's holding its sword upwards in a sort of like rallying sort of cry. You can see the the judge looks very serious. All of like the lines are very sort of angular and precise. And you know the statue appears to be sort of like perfectly balanced so whenever there's like something on one side of the statue there's something of sort of like a similar size on the other side of it the the great serpent we've said is like the musculature is exaggerated to make this sort of like idealized version of the human form and the the flayed god the one that looks like quentin you know it's strange it almost appears to have like a a sort of like semi sort of so all of the All of the sort of like the lines of the like the robes are sort of very flowing, the liquid running from the daggers are slightly curved, all the liquid running from them sort of like is very sort of carefully carved and flows into the robes. Very sort of like sweeping details. Fine. Just hope nobody asks us to do a miracle. Okay, what do you guys want to do? Um, I'll find a shop nearby and buy a candle and light as well at the judge's statue um yeah not a problem a little um um <clears throat> uh, a, a cheap candle will cost you like a copper piece so. yeah um uh, so yeah i'll just do that and i'll stay there for a few minutes and then i'll head back to the tavern and um i'm gonna do the same with more expensive candle <laughs> okay yeah you spend a silver piece on a slightly <laughs> fancier candle now, like I say, you're in the temple district, so like there's various sort of subsidiary, I suppose you say, like industries or trades sort of gathered around, you know, like people who can like produce like scrolls and people who can make candles and stuff like that. So you don't really have to go far to find them. As you're putting these uh, candles out, uh, an elder, slightly elderly looking uh, gentleman in a, a red robe. So walks past, sees you putting the the candles down. He nods approvingly and he says, "Oh, blessings of the old gods on you, my sons, and on you." He nods and he says, oh, "I see you. I see you're admiring the the excellent craftsmanship of the of the principal statues of of the old faith." Yes, we lost. It was a sad loss to New Zealand the day that uh, Krosnon laid down his tools for the last time. Indeed. Did you know him well? Uh, why, yes, it was uh, It was myself who commissioned him to create these uh, these statues. Oh. And uh, you are a priest of the old gods, are you? Indeed, my son. My name is Matlal. Ah. And where do you hail from? He says, ah, well, uh, my my tale is uh, not of great importance, but I was, I was once a, a, far, a simple farmer who settled in Mancone, and, and during those blighted nights of colourless fire when the old gods made their displeasure known for the faithlessness of the people and the very land 
burnt and booked with their displeasure. My, my old life was swept away in a, a flood of fire and tears. And naive fool I was at the time, as a person raised in Rowley and I, I called out to Leander for salvation or for some sort of surcease to the tragedy, but none was forthcoming. Days, it seemed like weeks, I wandered, starving, singed, uh, barely able to get the soot out of my clothes, and eventually, as luck would have it, I found a, a wagon of traders heading to New Zealand, and as I walked through the gates, the the first thing I heard was a the the people discussing a I mean, it's no longer here but a uh, a small statue of one of the old gods that was a a small shrine I believe set up some time ago here and uh, well as soon as I heard that I knew that this was the place I was supposed to be and I I became a follower of the old gods and as more people began to follow their ways eventually we were able to save up enough money between us all to replace the the old shrine with the, the magnificent four statues you see here hmm. yes the old shrine was um the favorite of ours ah oh, indeed i i would not be the man i am today had it not been here the after wandering for so long and receiving no reward for my previous misguided faith it it almost seemed as though the the old shrine crude as it was it had some vital spark that drew me towards it and i knew as soon as i laid eyes on it that i had given my faith in vain before and that here was a here was a god or gods truly worthy of devotion for after all have not the the young false gods of Rohalin been around for but a a blink or a brief span in the grand scheme of things whereas the the old gods were here for many hundreds and thousands of years before and they shall be here many hundreds and thousands of years after Indeed. Indeed. And um, you yourself, stranger, uh, did are you a follower of, of the gods? Uh, and I'll, I guess, point to my um, gauntlets on my wrists that have the judge's uh, emblem on them. It's um, oh, splendid, splendid. It's always a, it's always a pleasure to talk to another follower of the of the true gods uh, yes sir luckily we were the the lady of the towers was kind enough to make an edict that all the faiths are welcome in New Zealand as long as their worship does not contravene any of the other laws of New Zealand so well, those of us who follow the old faith we have made our home here and much as there is sometimes a, a little bit of conflict between, and I don't mean physical conflict, an ideological conflict between ourselves and the, the, the followers of the, of the new false gods, uh, by and large we manage to make our way without interfering overly much in each other's business. Indeed, as it should be. Uh, I wish when he looks over at Quentin and uh, Weimar's you were speaking, I presume you were here as well, Weimar. And, and here he says, uh, and um, and your your friends, have they heard the the words of the true gods? Yes, they have. You you could say that. <laughs> I know, I know. Splendid, splendid. And at this point, I'm going to ask Brock, can you please roll me a d6? And on a one or two, this guy's going to notice that you bear a, a slight resemblance to the statues. Because he, he looks at them a lot. So he, t he turns around and he, uh, he, he sort of like looks lost in thought for a few moments. And he's like, uh, have we, uh, have we, 
uh, uh, apologies, I don't mean to seem too forward, but have we have we met each other before? You you look a little you look a little familiar. Ah, maybe it's just my, my old eyes. They're not as sharp as they used to be. At which point is how well uh, the the blessings of the old gods keep you safe from harm. This is it. Should you wish to to pay worship, of course we have the statues here where people leave their offerings, and we have a we have a small building. And he, he sort of gestures like through the statues. It's like a small building. And he's like a, we we make our our worship and our temple in there. You would of course all be welcome. May the old gods keep you safe from harm in all the dark places where you must walk. And he sort of bows to each of you, steps between the statues, and he heads off into this like little temple building. Now Malcolm's sitting there with a smug smile on his face. Well, it, I'm sure it took a lot of effort to build all this. Um but that they put aside enough people and resources to build, build, you know, shrines as well. They, whoever is running this, is doing a great job. <laughs> right then. Okay, what's the plan, guys? What time of day is it? <laughs> it's about midday now. Because obviously you've been doing your shopping and wandering around a fair bit and whatever. Oh, I, th I think we're all a little outdated in terms of fashion. So any general clothing, I think we need to get an update. <clears throat> um, obviously the suit of armour. It's a, it's a fashion statement. We get it. <laughs> and uh, I don't know, maybe get a sheet to throw over Brock every once in a while. <laughs> Make it a big one. Yeah. Uh, that's it, yeah, he'll raise far less suspicion walking around dressed like a ghost. We'll, we'll dress him up like, we're going to get him a toga. That's what we're going to do. <laughs> But yeah, any, anyone who wishes to buy just sort of like average, like day-to-day -day clothing, it'll cost you a gold piece. Okay. Yeah, I'll buy some yeah. just yeah, I'll, bog I'll standard. Some. Yeah, it's basically like a, a sort of shirt with like slightly sort of like frilled sleeves, like a waistcoat, again, some, some trousers, like breeches effectively, and then like some like stockings that go below them, shoes. And if you wish, one of these sort of little leather like tricorn hats that a lot of people seem to be wearing. One thing you did notice, Brock, which struck you as a little bit strange, you in particular, when you were up in the northern part of the uh, of the town, so like visiting the furriers and talking to the ice walkers, you notice that like a lot of people in the uh, the northern parts of the town. First, you thought they'd like all got white hair. But as you were wandering around, you actually saw a person who'd been like doing a bit of like uh, walking around, looked a bit hot and bothered. You actually saw them like take off this like white wig that they were wearing and use it to like sort like, of dab themselves down, then like put it back on their head. And you've noticed like in the sort of slightly more affluent parts, like, there'd be like a lot of people wearing these like white wigs. Well, let's get a Brock one. <laughs> Have they got normal <laughs> hair underneath, or are they sort of they, bald they, underneath? They, they do have normal hair, but they appear to have, like cut it short, presumably. All right, to cover it up. Wear these wigs, you know. I'll just, I'll probably openly laugh at that when I see it. I won't be able to resist. You do notice I've... you've not noticed any ice walkers wearing a wig. No, quite right. None of this poncy uh, outfits either. I should imagine. No, the uh, the stuff the ice walkers wear tends to be a little bit more sort of hard wearing and practical, and yeah. in the sort of poorer areas of the town, that seems to be the general sense. Things like trousers, waistcoat, working man shirt, 
whereas in the slightly more affluent areas like the shirts are slightly frillier the waistcoats are a bit more embroidered the hats are a bit more elaborate there's people wearing these white wigs yeah i'll just i'll just be pointing it out to Lan, and we'll just be chuckling away to ourselves i should imagine yeah as you've been like walking through town ever in the sort of more affluent areas every time she sees one she's like hey in like ice walker she's like hey there's another one look <laughs> and you'll yeah. get a chuckle about that fake hair come up with some sort of word for it okay syrup <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay so it's over to you guys you've, bought, you've all bought any of you wish have bought sort of like more up to date clothes so our quartermaster restocked the wagon. With, yeah, uh, we've got to buy a new one first. <laughs> oh, I think he's bought a new wagon. Yeah. yeah. Malcolm has bought a wagon and two mules. Yeah, as long as we've got provisions for our journey. Horses, that's... commonplace, yeah. Horses? Yeah. Yeah, you see a few horses about, yeah. We can get horses and save ourselves a hell of a lot. Of That's certainly a thing you could do. They are available. Um, Malcolm obviously he bought mules, but he did sit. He did sort of like ask about the prices of various things. So you'll know that you can basically buy a a horse, a riding horse, for about seventy five gold crowns. Any of you wish to do that, you can do so. Just let me know. Do we want horses? Obviously, someone will have to drive the cart. Well, we'll have to go out the... Well, most of us will have to go out the pace of the wagon anyway, won't we? Or cart, or whatever it is, I guess. Well, yeah, we're not overworking the horse, are you? But you could... um, If someone wants to ride a horse, it would be a useful addition for certain situations, I should imagine. We could hire a teamster or someone to look after the horses while we were in the tower or while we were, you know, um, adventuring. And that would allow us to, you know, we can hire teams. We can drive the wagon and we can have horses and might travel a little bit faster through the, um, cause the weather is more it's definitely tolerant. More, yeah. It's definitely more yeah. temperate. Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking then why Mars not got to like hobble down these roads. I just kind of always see him sitting in the back of the wagon. <laughs> his, yeah. horse. He's got the armor. Let's get him a horse. Sure. <laughs> it's the only thing to keep our spirits up is to look around and see why more sh- struggling to keep up. <laughs> <laughs> Those long, long days. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's, it's, get some horses in yeah and honestly like we could hire like entire teams of people at this point for whatever we need so well now we've got no sage to pay yeah yeah because it's that <laughs> like we, we need to find the golden tomb that he has somewhere <laughs> so. but yeah um so are, are we buying horses i, I think we get Three horses, say four, because then you've got a spare. Yeah. How then, much is that going to set us back? Uh, 300, so 75 each. Yeah. Okay. Not a problem. Yeah, so you've now got a, you've got all your slightly more modern clothes, you've got a cart and two mules, any individual supplies you bought and four horses. Yeah, all white. <laughs> well, that, that might be a bit more difficult. Uh, well, props can be great, so okay. <laughs> I'll I, I tell you what, roll, roll me a D6, Quentin, if you're specifically looking for white horses. Three. You managed to find one white horse, one grey horse, 
and the other two are probably just like your normal sort of like russet brown colour. That'll do. Okay. Um, can we also try and hire a teamster? You can indeed. Let me just or, uh, not see how much they cost. Stable person in the north. Okay, so boom, boom, boom. here we go. So this is obviously going to come down to a uh, some sort of charisma-based role to locate a person to hire. So who is going to make the hiring attempt? Uh, I've got eight charisma. <laughs> so probably not Quentin then. Yeah, not me. It would just loom out the shadows and be like, we will give you money. <laughs> or stab uh, you. <laughs> I'll do it. Okay, that's not a problem. So, it would be... What's your charisma? Twelve. Okay, so there's no modifier. So, I'm going to make a quick roll. Okay. Yep, not a problem. You are able to locate a a teamster, for want of a better term. They they ask you they're sort of going great. They're asking for obviously literally all their all you're sort of planning to hire them to do presumably is like drive the cart where we tell you to drive the cart. Yeah, and then mine the horses when yeah. you stop. Yeah, not a problem. So they're basically asking for two gold pieces a month. Sold. Perfect. Okay, let me just uh, roll a random name for this Teamster person. He says waiting for his random name generator to load up. Okay, so the the person you hire is a young man by the name of Simon Duran. No, we need his brother then, we've got Duran Duran. Not so, man. And he appears to be a, a fairly sort of young lad, you know, sort of like mid-teens. He's... He's been sort of like working around doing a few odd jobs. He he used to live on a farm with his parents, so he's got some experience with animals. He seems to know what he's talking about. You know, you ask him you ask him a few sort of like oblique questions about horses and like animal care and whatever, just to suss him out to make sure he knows what he's talking about. And yeah, he seems to know he seems to know his stuff. And you hire him on full two gold pieces a month. Obviously, he says, like, yeah, he's happy to look after the horses, drive the cart, etc. You know, for like, the two gold pieces a month, he's like, obviously, he's not looking to put himself in like any like major like adventurer style danger for like two gold pieces a month. He's like, oh, if you want anything outside that, obviously, some sort of arrangement can be reached, but the, the two gold pieces a month will get you like the horse care and driving the cart for you. And I'm going to ask, since you hired him, Malcolm, I'm going to ask you to come up with one notable thing about his physical appearance. It can be pretty much anything. Um, I think you should have a kind of crooked nose. Okay. Not like the kind of witchy one with the... Yeah. Okay. Maybe slightly green-tinted teeth as well. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so he's got slightly rotten teeth and he has a crooked <laughs> nose with a wart on it and he he also has a 
probably due to his nose, which looks like it might have been broken in the past. He has a slightly nasal voice. But he's, he's willing to hire on for two gold, and he seems to know his shit when it comes to horses. That's all we need. Um, so I don't think there's anything else you want to do. You just want to relax for the afternoon and head out in the morning? Okay. Yeah. Head to the tower. Fresh start tomorrow. Everyone to the tavern for a quick beer. Yeah, no problems. You all head back to the tavern. You relax for the evening. You know, you have a few more drinks, a bit more to eat, a few more bar snacks, etc. The as you sort of sat down there and obviously there's the general chin wagging going on with the locals you see that the the sort of changeling discovery that happened earlier on like the sort of news of that has like filtered through to like the general populace and there's a great deal of like talking about that and there's various sort of odd rumors and like whispers you hear about them like you hear one guy used to like oh i i, I hear there i hear there men that become consumed by their greed and they they turn into these horrible creatures and other ones like oh I, I hear they were like near the chaos stone when that exploded and they were like twisted up by it into these horrible creatures and then like there's an old timer who's like I see this old magic behind it that's not causing this bullshit and he's sort of like waving his like stick around and he's like, ah, oh, evil magic and witches and devil we are behind it. You mark my words. And right there's, man. there's general sort of like chatting and like everyone's like sort of has a theory about where these like creatures come from. The only thing people seem to agree on is that like they come out of the west where these like dragon spine mountains are. But like all the theories about what they are, why they're here are all like wildly different. Obviously, I've just given you a sample there. If you can think of it, you've probably heard a theory about it. Before we leave tomorrow, is there any chance of getting some of this concoction that they've come up with? I use on the gate. Someone's yeah. probably said it. That's absolutely fine. It, it basically costs the same as holy water, which is like 25 gold pieces of vial, because it, it's mostly holy water with some of the... With, after asking around a bit, you basically find out that it's got it's mostly holy water. It's got a bit of like mashed up like garlic in it, and then it's got like a very small amount of like iron filings and sort of like powdered silver in it as well. Yeah, it's just if we encounter anyone on our journeys that we're a bit suspicious of, we can put it to the test, can't we? Yeah, like I said, that's, that's 25 gold crowns each. How much of it do you want to buy? Like I said, it's 25 gold crowns a flask. It's not that there's, there's a fair few people like selling it, and in fact, like you might struggle to buy some because a lot of people seem to want to get hold of some as like the news of this, this like changeling has like sort of circulated, and lots of people are like, Oh, it was that stuff on the gate that stopped them. Oh, give me, give me three flasks of that. How much would you need to use to sort of test someone out, as it were? Well, the the guy, obviously, you. You're not giving like a, a recipe or like a hard. Food, no, no. But you know that the the guy at the gate, as he was doing that with his sensor, it was just like a little sprinkling of it. Mm. I mean, you're assuming he can just empty it and like drench that one guy like randomly. So if you if you had a flask, how many sort of uses would you get out of it? Would you say for your twenty five gold? I'd say you could probably get if you just doing like a little sprinkle, you'd probably get like five uses out of it. So, what do we think? Just one flask of it, or...? I think we get one each. Yeah? Five total, yeah. Okay. Got one for the cart boy. Okay, six, so... If we can. Yeah, that's absolutely fine. Obviously, if you're going to buy, like, massive quantities of it, that might become a bit more challenging, but yeah, six flasks. It takes you a couple of hours. You have to, like, ask a few different people, because a few people will be like, oh, I've only got, like, two flasks left. There's been a bit of a run on it. But you ask around, eventually you get you get these six flasks, but it's get it's a bit later when you get back to the tavern. But I'll I'll create a specific like item thing for those and drop like one on each of your carrot sheets after the session. But you all retire to the tavern to 
the Hunter and Beetle. You settle them for the evening, a few drinks, listen to this old man rampaging about random magics. You will set, unless any of you have anything specific you wish to do, will sort of fade to black here and we'll pick up the next morning. You know, the. So, you, any of you who are injured, you can recover 1d3 hit points. You don't have to spend any rations because you've eaten in the tavern. So that was 1d3, right? That's correct, yeah. Yep. Damn! Oh, Bro Brock's been taking his vitamin G. <laughs> yep. It's meat back on the menu, boys. Looks like garlic's back on the menu, boys. Okay, so presuming you guys are planning on heading off early morning, I'll move us back onto the main map. Yep. Get a full day's travelling. Indeed. Okay, so we'll wait for the map to load up. From what you've been told, it's like a day's travel to the sort of southwest following the, the coast across the river to reach the Worms Watch Tower. You wake up at sort of first light. Your teamster, Duran, is like, obviously you told him to like get the cart ready early. So as you head out, you see he's like, he's been feeding like your horses and the mules on the cart and sort of like, checking their sort of harnesses and their saddles and whatever getting them ready so as you head out he's got all of the horses and everything ready to go and he's he's just sort of like climbing up onto the cart giving it a quick check over to make sure the wheels are all right and stuff like that Cl climbs up onto the mule and he's like right then where are we heading to uh we're in Wyrm's watch please he's like all right okay uh, no problems we just uh follow the coast uh we uh, we should sight it by the end of the day. Excellent. And you indeed follow the coast for a day. So I'm going to ask one of you. It doesn't matter which one of you. Can you please roll me four d tens? Just see if anything random occurs on the way. I'll do it now. So. Uh, two sixes, a four, and a five. Okay, so you are blissfully unmolested by any unfortunate happenstances or encounters during the day. And as it's getting to the very end of the day, darkness is falling, the light is starting to fade, you finally draw close to this large stone tower that obviously you've been sort of seeing for for some while now but you're finally sort of getting close to it again you can see some guards stood outside attired in a, a very similar manner to those that you've seen in New Zealand you can see it appears to be a very sort of squat sort of like fortified tower you can see the, the couple of the guards on the sort of entrance way they have muskets they're sort of stood there with these muskets you can also catch a glimpse of some guards sort of on the top of the towers over the little sort of crenulations and there appears to be what looks to be like some sort of bonfire or sort of large pile of wood perhaps this is the beacon they spoke of like on the top of the tower and you can see like there's a guard stood by the side of that and there's what looks to be like a little brazier or something you can't really see it's sort of like burning sort of a wisp of smoke sort of coming up What do you guys want to do as you're sort of approaching? Obviously, the uh, Duran has sort of like fallen back a bit in the car because he's letting you guys go first and do what you want to do. He's just like driving the car behind you. Um, <clears throat> cool. So I guess we'll um, gallop up to the 
guards and kind of jump down and say we're here to see Lady Dixon. At which point the uh, the guard says, uh, is she expecting you? No. Unlikely. He says, well, he looks a bit sort of suspicious when you say that and he seems to like give like a little nod to the other guard who stood with him and he's like, okay, okay well, who shall I say is... Uh, who should I say is seeking an audience? Well, um, you. Well, you got any like papers yeah. or credentials or anything like that? Uh, nothing that we uh, would be of use here, I don't think. But if you say that uh, Castellan, Longrove, and friends are here to see the lady. So we've got a statue, does that count? He, he, he sort of starts as his reply to, to you, and then at Quentin, <laughs> we've got a statue, does that count? Is that. Looks a bit confused and he's like, oh, all right, I'll tell her. Uh, give me a moment. She, I can't guarantee she'll see you though. She's very busy. And he sort of like heads inside and you hear him sort of like under his breath, sort of say to the other guard, like, keep an eye on them. And he wanders into the tower. A few moments later, I mean, probably about five, ten minutes, the door opens and Mercy Dixon comes out she is a, a young woman although her hair's now slightly graying and you can see like on one side of her face like all of her hair's sort of missing there and just what looks like a horrible burn scar down half of her face she's wearing like practical like leather armor you can see she has like a couple of pistols on her belt she's wearing one of those sort of like bandoliers with like the powder bags across her chest and she, as she's walking out, she's obviously like talking to the guard who's gone to fetch her. And you hear her as she's approaching the door, her voice getting louder, say, Look, if this is a practical joke, I'll skin the hide off the man who thought it was a good idea. To... And then she like sees you guys and like she just like stops her mouth, sort of open, her voice just like trailing away to nothing. And she like blinks and rubs her eyes as though she can't believe like it's actually you guys. Um, I'll I'll smile, give her a smile and say like, if you want to, you can, you know, maybe stab me in the hand to see that we're real. But, uh, hello. She looks at her mouth still like open, like she's like lost for words. And um, she's like, oh, uh, by, by all the gods, uh, um, come in, come in. Uh, you, you, can, you can leave your horses with them, with my man. Yeah, um, we have our. Um, our man here as well. <laughs> too. Yeah, he's like, yeah. he's like, yeah, don't worry about me. I'll stay with the cart. And you guys head in. You're sort of led through the tower into what appeared like the second floor to what appears to be like almost like a sort of tactical center or sort of like planning room. It's mostly just like a big table with various sort of like parchments and maps and various like written materials over it. There's a few chairs there. She. She sort of sweeps all of the stuff to one side, clearing a space on the table, and then she she gestures to the chairs. There must this was where she plans with her guard. There's numerous chairs. She's she's almost again still like lost words. She just sort of like waves a hand and like gestures at the chairs. Yeah, I'll take a seat. And then she says, uh, turns to the guard who's like obviously accompanied you in, and she's like, uh, go and fetch another two of the men and um, bring us drinks. At which point he sort of nods and heads out. Uh, at which point, a few minutes later, as you're all sitting down, three guards come back in, including the first one. The two walk in, are sort of holding like muskets, or they're sort of holding them down. They're not, they don't walk in like that, leveling them at you. <laughs> the, the the first guard, yeah, they're not sort of like solid snaking it into the room. The, the first guard sort of walks in. He puts like this, uh, this big like glass of what looks like wine down. This big sort of like glass file. Puts some drinking vessels down at one for each of you one for Mercy Dixon as well pours this wine out of it and can you all make me a d6 roll at this point let me know if any of you get a 6 nope okay any 6s nope 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 okay no problems so all the wines poured out she raises her a glass to you and takes a uh, takes a big swig of this wine and then she says uh, please 
Obviously, there's a glass for lamb as well. Place. I'll take a drink anyway. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Quentin? I'll wait. <laughs> okay. So the, the three of you drink the wine, and it, it tastes all right, but it's got like an odd, odd sort of like slightly like gritty sort of like, almost like someone had like sprinkled like, like a bit of sand in it or something like that. And then you see she's like looking at Quentin as though she's like waiting for you to like also drink him. I'm, I'm going to say to Quentin, I was like, it's fine. It's just unfiltered. <laughs> is it like, is it got like some fragments of silver or something in it? Or... You will lean over and look into the bottle, which is now pretty much been emptied. And you actually do see there's some small like flecks of what look like silver dust in the bottom of the one. Like the, the big carafe they bought him. And as I put my glass down, I, I would just nod and say we are who we who we say we are. Jeez. Oh, is that garlic grit in there? And I'll <laughs> try and see if there's anything at the bottom of my glass. You, you see a uh, one corner of uh, Mercedes's mouth twist up in a smile, and she says, uh, "No, there's a." Uh, there's a very small amount of iron and uh, silver dust in there. My, my apologies. We we have to be sure. Oh no, we we saw. We um, we've seen a demonstration of. We there's a lot that we need to understand, but we've seen some of this. Indeed, the the, the fire lord is becoming ever more ever more cunning in his attempts to extend his influence. First, it was just these brutish and lizard men we we saw them off but what he can't take by strength he now seeks to suborn by trickery and deceit again my apologies we had to be sure i'm sure of you'll course. i'm sure you'll understand that seeing you all here is something of a surprise after all these years now are you going to take a sip as well or she, she smiles and says, uh, yes, of course, and she she drinks hers, like, takes a big glug of hers again. Wonderful. I have to say, it's a very different place than we left behind. Indeed, and I I suppose, uh, and she, again, she sort of like does this like, odd smirk where, like, the, the side of her mouth that's on the scarred side of her face doesn't really seem to move. Like maybe she's got some like nerve damage. Mm -hmm. Just like the other side of her mouth tilts upwards. And says, "Well, I suppose thanks are due, since uh, after all, it was a uh, in large part the the wealth that you set aside that enabled us to make the the now town of New Zealand what it is today." Whoever has been at the helm has done a wonderful job. We had a tour. Looked brilliant. Well, it was lot. It was largely, it was largely myself, uh, with the aid of Quelac, before he left us, and uh, Crosnon before he passed, and a few others uh, from the uh, from the old village, many of whom were no longer with us. But uh, we, we waited, we waited for a few years to see if you would return. Uh, then after a few years it seemed likely that you would not return so we turned our thoughts to to making New Zealand in what we hoped you would have wanted it to be obviously the the, the towers we knew you had already laid plans for so we started there and then with the with the influx of people fleeing various villages and the the changes that ripped across the landscape uh, plus the increase of trade it's it's grown from there. No, it's a delight. I think we all agree. Malcolm especially. Yes, I am very happy with the uh, uh, shrines to the old gods. Uh, truly appreciative of uh, your consideration. She says, uh, yes, uh, obviously I wasn't involved in commissioning the statues uh, myself. It was, uh, it was some fellow who arrived in the, uh, arrived in the town uh, after we'd finished the, the towers. But um, as I said, it was the last thing that uh, 
with the cross and sculpted before he he passed uh, or carved. I don't know the exact term. I'm no stonemason, but uh, I know that he, in addition to the statue in in the forest here, he wanted to do something else to 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 remember you all by, since we didn't hear you returning. And that, that was his way of doing it. It was his own little in-joke, I suppose. Yes, it caught us by surprise. I I should imagine it would. Had I but known you were returning, I would have made sure that I, I was there to greet you in New Zealand. But uh, most of my most of my time now is spent in Worms Watch, uh, keeping a wary eye on the on the west for whatever dangers might roil out of there next. And what can you tell us of this Fire Lord? She she frowns as you mention it, as though the mere memory of it is a painful to her. And then she says, uh, says yes, uh, I can tell you much about Brannon's betrayal. Uh, you recall, I, I presume, the, the, the la and she turns to Wama, you recall the the meeting we had uh, at Staffstone, uh, where he he claimed to have uh, procured an item that would allow him to control the the great white worm that could be used in the defence of Valconan should Rohelian ever turn its greedy eyes to our shores. Well, during the during the nights of Colossus Fire, when it seemed like magic and witchery ran rampant throughout the land he he took that item and in some way i don't know how i i have a little truck with that sort of devilry he used it to transform himself into the the likeness of a uh, of the white worm but larger and red like the uh, the fires of the sun and since that day he has squatted in the the mountains that rose to the west of here i do not know whether he caused the mountains to rise or whether that was the the knights of colorless fire i of course attempted to stop this devilish transformation and well you can see how i was rewarded for my efforts i managed to make it out of there with what few men i could and uh, retreated back to new zealand where we fortified our position. Then later on, I ordered the, the Worms Watch Tower be constructed so that we would have advance warning of any further danger coming out of there. But as you've no doubt seen, he is now becoming more cunning and treacherous with his his efforts to expand his influence, although he himself has not been seen for, for many years. Only these creatures, whatever they are, that seem to serve him. Changeling, so here they are called. Well, the, the that's that's the name we've given those that can assume the likeness of humans. Um, originally, the these these dra dragon creatures, these lizard creatures, these these men with scales, they did not seem to have that capability. They they were simple brutes, uh, warriors, and they were they were a difficult foe, but we were able to force them back. These. These changelings are relatively new, although we have we've encountered a few, and have adopted measures in New Zealand to try and identify them. But uh, we have uh, we have one of our uh, one of our best in uh, New Zealand. Uh, any we capture are are sent to the the East Watchtower there for for dissection and examination in the hope that we can divine the secret of whatever they were and how we can better fight against them should it become necessary. Uh, and it's how many years since the Fire Lord himself has been seen? Let's see. It would be seven or eight years. Okay. And how long have we been gone? Ten years, I believe. Okay. The last time I laid eyes on you. Okay. Give or take a few months. And also, at that point, it's it's a few weeks to us. We've only been gone three or four weeks. She sort of 
raises an eyebrow in surprise when you say that. Well, witchcraft has changed the times. I no doubt. Um, and how long after we left did these nights of the colorless fire occur? It, it could only have been a few months. Ah, okay. It was strange. Uh, we, we'd have quiet quiet spells and we thought it was over and then the, the land would begin roiling again. Uh, there was, of course, the the there was a huge explosion on the uh, what used to be called the the Isle of Witches. The Chaos Stone. I, I believe so. Yes. Uh, the they they although I've not been there myself, uh, they they now say there's a a huge chasm where it used to rest that seems to descend endlessly into the very earth itself. Uh, strange people live around it and occasionally strange smoke smells and creatures rise up out of the, the cavernous depths. There's a there's a foolish uh, fellow who he, um, I'm sure he makes a, a small amount of coin uh, ferrying people across the across the lake to the moor as they now call it. Um, from what I hear uh, he ferries more people over there than come back, if you know what I mean. I do. I do. Um, and what can you tell us of the factions and uh, politics of the land? She says, well, to, that, that would require some detail to go into, but uh, very roughly, to give you an overview, there's a uh, there's the area we call the, the Free Coast, such as it is, which is New Zealand, uh, the Wolf Forest, and uh, Worms Watch. There's a uh, Hagshaw to the west, uh, where uh, the older village of Deerson is uh, located. That's ruled by a, a strange sort of sisterhood of priestesses. They, they seem to have negotiated some sort of peace with the the worm spire mountains uh, although heaven only knows what devilish pact they've made with the fire lord to um, secure such a peace there's of course uh, there's a brackenwald to the north of here which appeared during the the nights of colorless fire and then she sort of like sniffs and huffs a little bit and then to the to the far west there's a there's a few settlements that have been made by a People from Rohalene, and she, again she saw a lot of hoffs as New Rohalene. Apparently, they're calling it or some such foolishness. And then uh -huh. far, far to the north, the northwest, there are the Frost Spine Mountains and the Ice Wind Forests. There's a strange, strange tales come out of there uh, of strange beasts and uh, strange uh, elven-like figures. I mean, no offence, but strange elfin-like cre creatures and figures moving through those forests and those mountains, and it seems to always be held in the grasp of a, a deep winter. And then to the east of there, just to the east of the Great Lake, we have the what's become known as the Forest of Dracovia, and that's a, a dark, fell place where the, the soil is like so much cold ash. The they say that the the nobles that rule over the villages there are a cursed breed uh, possessed of strange witch-born powers who give homage to a to a hidden king who lies in a castle deep in the mountains to the east of there Okay. Okay. And how how much how long does it take to get to Deerson? She says it's uh, a week's travel, is it? 
He says, I don't think it'd take you a week. I see uh, your problem. Well, you're, pr you're probably looking about five days travel, give or take. Okay. If you stick close to the coast, the the terrain's fairly flat. I mean, if you're if you're on horses, you you'll probably make it even less than that. Okay. Uh, I should be careful if I were you, but like I say, they they've adopted strange ways since they they took to the following this this sisterhood, such as it is. Although I know very little about them, and as I say, it's devilishly too close to the Worms by Mountains for my liking. Okay. And has anyone gone into the Wyrmspire Mountains looking for the Fire Lord? A while back we sent a few a few patrols into the mountains. None of them came back. Eventually okay. I, I determined that I was simply wasting men and sending them up there for no real benefit. So we've adopted a policy of maintaining a wary watch on the west from here. And we've concentrated on fortifying and building up New Zealand as best we can. Okay. Mm. At which point she uh, she turns to the to one of the guards who's next to her, and she says, um, go, "Go and uh, go and fetch me the uh, fetch me the the wooden box from my chamber, if you would." And the guards like, oh, "Yes, of course." And he heads out, and she says, uh, she looks over and says, uh, "By the way, uh, Boimar, I, I have something for you. It, it'll be along shortly. Uh, what well, well, whilst waiting for uh, my man to bring it, is there anything else you need to ask me?" Well, I think we have everything we need. Is there any more word or news on um, some? Was he a warrior, warrior or a paladin that carried a? A mighty sword. She says, oh, "Evil do, man." Do, do, do you mean the wielder of the black blade? Yes, that could be the one. He says, "Well, yes, um, although not for a while. Um, he was, if you remember, he was holed up on the the witch's isle when last we laid eyes on each other. Um, when the when the nights of colourless fire first began, the the dead." who walked began to expand outwards from that isle seemingly at the command of the wielder of the black blade the the elves with which I believe um, you and she just at Weimar had made a pact with uh, say what you like about those shadowy devils they they stayed true to their word and they they descended on the island seeking to hem in the dead and protect all the rest of us while we organized ourselves and then there was the huge explosion of the the chaos stone and from what i hear from the the few advanced scouts i had sent with him the few that survived anyway the the wielder of the black blade was pretty much at ground zero when the chaos stone exploded one of my one of the men who returned uh, unfortunately died of his injuries sometime later claimed to see the, the wielder of the black blade falling into the the giant abyss now known as the moor as the centre of the island seemed to collapse in on itself and fall into the cavernous depths below at which point um, as, as she sort of having that conversation the guard comes back in with this sort of wooden box that's like that long one like a little like metal clasp on it and then she says uh, she holds it out towards you one and says uh it's a long overdue, but that's that's for you. And what is this? Uh, open it. And so then, I she, do. then uh, as you're sort of reaching out, she says, actually, and then she turns the box around, and you <laughs> see she sort of like reaches behind you, and she like presses a part of the box, and you hear like a sort of like <clears throat> inside, and she's like, now open it. Okay, so I do. <laughs> okay. You open it, and inside is like a scroll with like a wax seal on it, and you can see there's like a sort of mechanism on the inside of the lid, which has like mm -hmm. a small dart in it. Yeah. And like it appears like she's basically disabled some sort of trap. Yeah. Which says, "Sorry about that. It's been that long since I I put the box. I almost forgot about that." 
Mm -hmm. It wouldn't have done you any long-term harm. It's a, it's a, a, a paralytic agent. It's nothing deadly, but and that that's for you, as I say, long overdue. All right. So <laughs> very gingerly, um, I, I I will open it and peek inside. Okay, you you take out this scroll. Like I said, it's got a wax yep. seal on it with like a little black ribbon. Mm -hmm. You you break it open and in sort of like fanciful calligraphy on the side of the scroll it says I, Mercy Dixon the Lady of the Two Towers protector of New Zealand do hereby bequeath the role of Castellan of the Towers of New Zealand to Weimar Lone Grove and she signed it at the bottom oh Oh, is this from all those years ago? Indeed, when we when we first started looking at the plans you all laid out for the towers, as you know, it was always the intent that you should assume stewardship over them mm -hmm. once they were built. Uh, in those early days, before we wrongly, it now seems, believed that you would not return, I wrote this out and laid it aside so that if anything were to happen to me before you returned mm -hmm. my wishes would remain plain and I left instructions with my men that it, it should only be opened if something happened to me and a person matching your description arrived if anything you'd be doing me a favour by taking it off my hands it means I won't have to split my time between here and the New Zealand I would far rather be keeping a watch to the west and protecting New Zealand from here I, I've i already delegated much of the, the the trade matters and various other minor things to uh, to a mayor um, Elijah Kersey by name and focused mainly on the defence of the town but splitting my efforts between here and there has stretched me somewhat thin yeah no doubt no doubt given the nature of the threats these days. Indeed. I'm not sure that uh, Mayor Kersey will be overly keen on someone turning up with uh, this scroll and assuming the role of Castellan, but uh, tough. Oh, well, I'm sure we'll make do. There's... Indeed, he, Mayor, he has to be a reasonable man for you to have chosen him, right? Mayor Kersey is a reasonable man and he is very good at what he does. But he is he is a merchant, he is a trader, his mind runs like a machine powered by coin. He ah. the only time we have had disagreements is when I have had to overrule him for the security of New Zealand. He is he is somewhat hesitant to anything he believes will compromise the flow of trade, money and goods through New Zealand. But sometimes mm -hmm. those sacrifices have to be made for the protection of all. I'm sure you understand as a, as a soldier yourself. Right. No. Yes. It's no use trying to trade if everyone's dead. It's all right. And unfortunately, uh, as, the, as the mayor did not, uh, did not live through the, the military actions in that were necessary to preserve New Zealand when the Knights of Colourless Fire first came. Uh, he, I don't think he appreciates the quite the the gravity and the sacrifices that were made to ensure mm. that New Zealand remained standing. But I have no doubt that as long as New Zealand is protected, he will do his best to ensure that it continues to prosper. Right, and I I think it only will take uh, the right person to talk him around on certain matters. I'm sure. Although I should make you aware as a, as the the Castellan of uh, New Zealand, I should make you aware that recently we've been having um, problems with rising crime in New Zealand. Uh, robberies, thefts uh, things of that nature uh, I personally believe although I've not been able to verify this that there is uh, some sort of organisation or agency behind the this recent rise in crime the the thefts, the 
the operation seemed too well organized for it to simply be happenstance but as of yet i've been unable to to track down precisely who is responsible but obviously as as castellan working with the mayor mm. that that will fall within your remit so i thought i should pass that on to you no, that, that is that is good to know and it does make me wonder what exactly is behind this you wouldn't be organized or well funded enough unless you had the backing of someone with well, i suppose the funds to do it i, I would say the only thing i've managed to my men have managed to find out about it is a, is a name nothing more mm -hmm. the crimson coin that's all we've been able to find out that's for the group i presume not a person I don't know. Mm. Well, something to look into. I, um... Have, have you heard from Rohalim? We, as I say, there has been, there has been some settlement on the, the western coast by various factions from Rohalim, but from what little news has filtered through from there, it appears that the the, the Knights of Colorless Fire, the, the fallout of that event was not solely confined to Valcon, and, and I believe that, at least for the moment, the, the mainstay of Rohalim is currently dealing with their own problems, but I'm mm. sure once they have... Uh, once they have settled whatever they are dealing with, uh, they may become a problem in the future. And as I say, they're, they've already made some settlement attempts on the the western coast. Though I believe right. it's, it's of a fairly small sort of nature at the moment. Okay, well, at least we seem to have a moment of reprieve. Indeed. For, for all the oh. harm that the uh, the Knights of Colorless Fire caused. Uh, at least it's given us that. True. Say, how are we in terms of troops? In terms of troops, there are... We have 30 at New Zealand at my last count, uh, along with their... Uh, captain and I have 12 here are there uh, cell swords these days there are there are many displaced soldiers at fortune uh, although as their reliability I, mm. I couldn't possibly comment but yes there are along with the along with the newcomers those who those who appeared during the nights of colorless fire though refugees from various villages that were were burnt or destroyed uh, a lot of people were displaced during those nights uh, many of whom uh, i say many some of whom have obviously turned to the the more mercenary lifestyle yes which can be both a, a benefit and a, a curse unfortunately Yes, as is often the case. Indeed, and the all, all of the events of those nights, they've uh, many people are now suspicious. Some with good reason, some without, and uh, superstitious of things that may occur. Where they're anywhere, everywhere you go in the land, now you hear strange legends and stories about strange creatures, uh, strange uh, effects of the landscape devilry and witchery all about uh, I would honestly not be surprised if uh, when word gets back to Rohalim that uh, some of their more religious types attempt to head over here to potentially convert people or lay to rest what they see as the devilry occurring in Valcon. I mean obviously we, we don't know exactly what happened, what caused the the Knights of Colorless Fire, but if they, particularly the um, the Tosun lot, if they get the idea in their heads that somehow Valconan was the 
the epicenter of it. I would not be surprised if we see the the banners of their inquisitors and warrior priests uh, soon fluttering in the the winds of the Balconan coast. Oh no, they they did that over coin back home, and uh, now that we have. <laughs> burgeoning temple complex to the old gods, I presume that gives them a, an entirely different kind of incentive. Wow, indeed. Uh, I, I made my thoughts very clear on the, on the subject when we when we were re-establishing New Zealand, that as far as I was concerned, I, I, I did not care what what deities, what gods people worship, whether it be Leander, this this one true god who again whose worshippers seem to arrive during the nights of colorless fire or the the old Valconan gods uh, as long as the the worship of what or the even the the animal tribal spirits of your own people and she nods at brock i i honestly do not care what what people worship as long as they obey the other laws of the town they're free to have their buildings their statues their temples and worship as they see fit as long as they're not causing, as long as they're not breaking the law. But I dare say that may come back to bite us in the end. And obviously, you are, you are free to to deal with that as you see fit, Castellan. But uh, it seemed that our efforts were better spent elsewhere rather than trying to enforce some arbitrary rule of one particular religion in New Zealand. Speaking of which, what would you say is the number one problem? needing to be dealt with right now I would say probably the the rising crime rates in New Zealand mm. at the moment uh, and I'm sure for once the uh, the mayor would agree obviously cause it, if if the crime gets too rife in there it's going to start impacting the trade and obviously New Zealand being at the, the mouth of the Great River does rely a lot on trade that is what has allowed us to continue to be prosperous albeit the, the funds that you all laid aside were a great help initially to get us started it is the trade is the lifeblood that keeps the, the coffers flowing and allows us to, to maintain our guards and uh, building projects etc and the fire lord a, a dormant threat um, I, albeit not passive his, his influence is is felt you you've seen the, the the changelings yourself and there are there are stranger creatures in the the mountains that are occasionally accounted abroad hence the necessity in my opinion of this tower but the fire lord himself as i say has not been seen for many years although occasionally loud rumblings and smoke is seen from the tallest peak of the Wormspire mountains and local legends say that that is the the fire lord either slumbering or expressing his displeasure but i cannot discount the possibility that although he he seems to largely remain in the mountains at the moment that that foul creature might once again shed its shadow across the land all right um so john remind me did we ever learn what happened to the white dragon? Nope. Yeah, so I will put the question here. So what of the um, what of the dragon that 10 years ago the, plagued the land? The, the ice worm? Yes. Well, uh, when the when the fire lord first arose the, the, the white dragon flew out to challenge it and it was it was greatly injured in the battle. Uh, from what I hear, it was last seen flying east back towards presumably its lair in the mountains and has mm. not been seen since. I know it wasn't slain, but it was greatly injured. And one more question. <laughs> oh, of, of course, please. I, these are at the very top of my mind because this is where we left. Um, so apologies. But what of the undead? That is something that seemed to me to be very close to being overwhelming, and it, it wasn't apparently. As as an organised force, such as they were on the the Witch's Isle, that threat appears to have been ended by the the explosion on the Isle, 
and the the collapse of the central portion of it as i say the the isle is now inhabited only by a few small villages of strange folk around mm. the around the mall uh, the as i say with the with the rise of witchery and various unwholesome magics since the the knights of colorless fire there have been odd isolated incidents of the dead walking and various creatures rising um, particularly in the in the northeast but as an organized large-scale threat they largely seem to have been nullified and what of the um the ones that walk with wolves the ones that do not do not rot and carry the faces of our friends from from what i've heard they are most they mostly restrict themselves to dracovia now uh, they seem to have settled there uh, there have been a there have been a few people who have left that area have resettled locally uh, obviously myself and my men have questioned that from what information we've been able to gather it seems as though the the standard of life in dracovia is fairly good the 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 nobles there extract what they call the the red tax from their I roll my eyes at this she she nods <laughs> and I says, but I believe aside from that which I am assured by the people who have questioned that they are not taxed heavily enough to permanently harm people but aside from that they take very little in terms of food or land from their from their subjects pretty much leaving them to their own devices so for some it is seen as a as not a bad life up there but uh, the, the the night walkers seem to largely confine themselves to their as I say paying homage to their uh, their king who apparently resides in the mountains although I don't know very much about him well, this and I look to Malcolm Brock and Quentin well this while abhorrent uh, I would say um, it it does sound much better than the seemingly impending destruction that we were faced with 10 years ago when one of these could wipe out the entirety of New Zealand okay well uh, then of course there are the, the there are the rumors of the the red knight that, that I have heard uh, uh, according to although I've not been able to get any concrete information on them from what I've heard, a number of people, when they've been like waylaid by brigands, bandits, etc., but unfortunately, all too common occurrence nowadays. Uh, on occasions, those who have been had their wagon trains or their supply trains attacked during the night. On occasions, a a strange mist seems to rise up, and a a figure wearing red armor strides out of the mist dealing mortal blows to the the brigands and the ne'er-do-wells uh, saving the wagon train or the people who are being attacked he apparently asks for no thanks does not speak to those he has saved and simply disappears back into the mist once his work is done but these may simply be stories i've not been able to get any reliable accounts of this well, they're not stories of people being murdered, so that's already indeed not. I mean, the, good. the people who have apparently witnessed this are obviously grateful to to this person, but as as they say in the tales, he he asks for no thanks. He doesn't even speak to those he had saved. He accepts no tokens of gratitude. He simply disappears back into the mists and the darkness from where he came. Although, those who, on occasions when there is a natural mist hanging low some people say that that's a sign that somewhere in the land the the red knight is meeting out justice to evildoers he's become something of a of a local legend i suppose you could call it mm. but the uh the talk of people disappearing and appearing in mists of course reminds me of what we witnessed back in new zealand when the night walkers attacked so i I thought I'd mention it. Mm. Well, 
A lot to be done, no doubt. Indeed. Um, I... Our own tale is uh, far beyond the pale, and I think the less spoken of that, the better uh, from our time away. Yes, I were. One other thing I, I should probably mention to you, it, uh, it's a small thing, it quite skipped my mind until now. Uh, you recall I said that there was a, a foolish fellow who was a uh, for a price offering to ferry people across to the the moor the island you know as the witch's isle mm. uh, but of course we we investigated the fellow to make sure he was as on the level as someone could be and uh, well when we spoke to him he and he said that he, he knew you apparently mm. um would the fella be named Bazaar by any, any chance? Yes, that's it. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, uh, we'll have to perhaps pay him a visit. She says, anyway. well, he's, uh, his operation, although I hesitate to call it such, is, is about a, a day's ride mm. to the to the north of here, so it wouldn't take you long to get there. Well, um, any other pressing things we should address? I'll look to everyone else. That seems like plenty for today. He says, well then, perhaps uh, perhaps you'll do me the honour of Castellan and your companions of uh, resting here for the evening and uh, telling me the rest of your tale. I'm sure it must be a very interesting one. I, I would know what is what has happened to to my friends uh, in the time since we last saw each other and I think as you guys sort of start to relate to the tale that's when we sort of fade to black for the end of this session sort of fading out on your voices as you explain what has happened to you in the Dolman Wood to Mercy Dixon the lady of the Towers of New Zealand Thank you very much for playing, guys. I hope you all enjoyed the session. Yep. Yeah, very yes. much. Thank you. And obviously we can have a chat for a bit afterwards. We'll sort out XP and the like. But for now, it just remains for me to thank my wonderful players and anyone who's watching this either now or in the future. Hopefully we'll catch you for the next session. Take care.